welcome along to another Sunday special. We started this off last week doing kind of more come for the train, stay for the chat. So we've got the chat room going and uh, what I really want to do is focus more on the train. So in a moment we're going to lose the picture of me with my little kitty ears and we're going to just focus more on trains running and give you a little bit of a break from this isolation that's sweeping across the country. And I know it's tough, it's certainly tough here. And uh, I've come down with something, I don't think it's coronavirus, but it's left me robbed of energy and really exhausted. So actually just sitting back and watching trains run is pretty good for me. I'd also like to say a big, big thank you to, we had a new Patreon come on board. I haven't had a chance to get your name into the end credits of the regular videos, but we are on the case. So I just want to say a big, big thank you as well. And uh, don't forget to like this video, share it to and also subscribe to the channel. And uh, you can also check us out over on Patreon and Teespring too, because we've got uh, plenty of, uh, well, plenty of, well, we've got a mug in lots of different colours. And the cupboard monkey has now just taken my phone off me. Why do you want to take it out of that? Because that way you can sit it up properly and uh get it plugged in and do all the things that we need. Oh, all right. the things that we should have done before we started. Yeah, well I didn't because I was busy. Yeah. <laughs> I was busy doing other stuff. I was actually going to take that and use I'm it to read the comments. I'm sure you were. Can you plug in so that we can charge it? Otherwise you're not going to have many. <sighs> yes. yes. Jenny doesn't like being told what to do. No, I don't. Jenny really thinks she... I hate authority. Jenny honestly thinks Stick she knows man. what she's doing. <laughs> Jenny really does live under a delusion that she's competent. Hey, what? <laughs> Took you a second to work out what it said there. Oh my goodness, you are if slow. If we're just using this for comments, maybe, just maybe, you could have left it the way I like. I don't like it when it's not got its case on it. feels weird. Yeah, right? I'm sure. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm exhausted already. So I hope I find all you guys well. <laughs> In a minute, she will let me read some of your comments. I can see them scrolling on the screen, but I haven't yet um, got to the point where I can I am read trying my them. very, very best we'll try to get bester. this done quicker. <laughs> try it better. Speak of English. <laughs> I've had too much sugar. She fed me cookies earlier on. I thought um, you needed the extra energy mm, so, um, for that uh, built-in, cooked-in cookie goodness. Yeah, so if anybody's wondering, at the trains we've got going around, we've got a National Railway Museum Midland compound in Midland Railway Maroon. Um, huh. And uh, then we've got Butler Henderson, which is another National Railway Museum uh, Special Commission, the 11 Director class. And on top of that, we've got the very much requested Batman C class in the fully lined out SECR livery is number 592. It's going around on the topmost track, so you'll see it come into shot at some point. Um, when, there we go. So, um, <gasps> you've disappeared. Oh yeah, no, I've, oh I've no. now left the screen. And, um, cupboard monkey, Hello. cupboard monkey, you can read upside down. What are you on about? You've put my thing on upside down. That's just like... <laughs> right, right, get to the comments. Come on. You right, know you want so, to. Right, let's have a look through. Vertex Gaming and Trains. Hi to you. Disco. Disco Duck. Ta -ra, ta -ra, ta -ra. I said Fly My Sherman 1. Robert Cesare. Good afternoon. Combat Bunny. Hi to you. Robert Ronald Morritt. Hi Jenny and Zoe. Here we go again. Ron at Willenhall Parkway. Oh, and that's an interesting point. So I, I need to actually also mention... Uh, we trailed ahead for this in the um, uh, live stream that we did yesterday where we had that full-on virtual model rail expo, the perfect antidote to self-isolation. And a big, big thank you again to Fran Burke from Acura Scale, Oliver Davies from Rails at Sheffield, uh, James as well, who'd done a lot of the research work, came on to talk a little bit about the SECR fans. We also had uh, Richard Brighton from DCC Concepts, and on top of that as well, um, we had uh, Sven from Trainomatic as well to talk to us a little bit about the DCC decoders and other bits and pieces as well that they do. So a big, big thank you to all of those. And we uh, also had a lot of uh, people shared some links to yes. their own uh, 
models, which we couldn't go through the entire set yesterday. No. So we, we asked for people to submit their links, uh -huh. and you have. So um, shall we do some of them now? Shall we start work on these now? Um, so first up, there's a video from J94. So um, I hope J94's in. Um, I hope they're coming late and go, did you, did you play my video? Um, but we're going to put on a video from J94. Uh, sent this in through the Facebook messages before the show. And um, this is where it gets weird. Yeah, yeah. So this is from J94. And uh, we've got a layout tour. And I thought it would be great to share with everybody some of uh, the, um, you know, what you've been doing on your own model railways. Yeah, and a proper virtual expo. You come along and you see all of these wonderful layouts at the various events you go to. And we're, well, we can't do that right now, but we can through the internet because we're having a look at people's uh, layouts. Yeah, and it's always great to see what other people are up to and to get some great ideas. And it just shows what you can do with um, with, with plenty of imagination. I'm loving the layers that he's got going on mm. here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm assuming that uh, J94 is a heat. Yeah, and actually I like oh, those Oh, yeah. They look like, uh, are they off, they're not off Hornby 00 um, uh, level crossings, are they? But... Uh, what it does show is that quite often if you get broken bits and pieces and it shows and you know i know obviously we're not getting two shows at the moment but if you go to shows and have a good rummage in the bits and pieces box quite often you can get uh, little bits and pieces that you can really put to great use quite cheaply so things like houses. broken level crossing let's gates. go back a little bit there mm -hmm. look at those houses with the uh plants trailing up them that is lovely it gives yeah. an extra little bit of depth to the house yeah a bit more character and it, it's one of the things that you can do with a lot of uh, model buildings as well is that you can detail and add to them using a whole manner of stuff and i like the level crossing uh, gates there it, this all adds extra interest into a model and uh uh, but yeah, as I was saying, like the creepers on the side of the buildings work ever so well to oh, yeah. uh, just kind of uh, uh, bring things to life uh, and also, you know, add that kind of um, more personalised touch. Yeah. So this is J94 and uh, we've got a few more to go through as well. What we'll do is we'll do them maybe in two different sets. Oh, I was thinking maybe show a couple and then talk and uh, just have a check through the comments yeah, and things like that. Enough. And use a, use the comments to have a mm. break and uh, let me set up the next ones. <laughs> so I'm um, just looking through the comments. Uh, DT11 Gaming, hi for you. Uh, uh, Mark Wilson, evening my dogs. Kent Train fan, hi to you. Uh, Gary Tate, hi to you. Huey's Train Layout, evening. Anfield Road Layout and the Loft, hi to you. Uh, Jack's Model Railway, hi to you. Oh, um, Level Crossing Gates are handmade. Um, are they? Well, uh, they are actually really good. I did enjoy them. Um, so uh, I take it we've got J94 in the comments, have we? Uh, Flymore Chairman 1 said that. Right. Um, uh, we've got Norbert Roll. I'm not sick, but self-isolating here in Germany since three weeks now. Yeah, it's a bit like us. Well, certainly you. Um, you're supposed to be self-isolating because you've got a low immune system. Actually, um, no, I have the opposite. I have a high immune system. Yeah, I have lupus. It, yeah, but it, 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 any excuse and it will um, it causes you an issue. Oh, definitely. Uh, Zed Mark Anthony, hi. Uh, hello, everyone from New York. We're all stuck in lockdown over here. Yeah, and this is something it's sort of, it's kind of scary in a way. This isn't just affecting one small region. This is something that um, is affecting everybody all around the world. And it really is most peculiar. So, um, have we got another one queued up? I've got another two. Okay, right. So, um, we're getting a little blast there of, uh, of my model railway. So, you're seeing some of the stuff going round. Um, Where got... are your gronks? They're not... They're d just just bear with you. We are all gronks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop behaving yourself. Right, anyway. Um, <laughs> hi to you, Combat <laughs> Bunny. Um, hi, Paul Higgins. Otis JB, the compound's a lovely model. I still don't understand why it wasn't more popular. Yeah, it was quite a strange one because the National Railway Museum had had such a good response. Yeah, I'd love a drink. A good response to, um, I'm trying to remember, the, it was City of Truro. It actually was so popular, they had several iterations and they brought out 
the Midland compound and I know what you mean it's such a lovely locomotive and they just seem to struggle was well, that me or you that must have been you oh we've got uh, messages coming in on Facebook and they're going blind blind because you've left your speakers on oh yeah so I'm gonna well that's been lovely for everyone that uh, quick uh, blur I just thought, actually, that's not going to change anything. They'll still hear it, just we won't hear it up here. Oh, well. <laughs> so, if you're getting ding-dinged... Uh, right, hey, you can't get the stuff, can you? Um, can I turn off the bling-bling on Facebook? Uh, yeah, you probably can. Um, ah, who's actually ding-dinging me? It's one of our groups. Oh, uh, uh, options, uh, you should be able to mute group or something. Yeah, you'd have thought so, but no, so just uh, ignore it. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, we're being mithered. We're anyway, being mithered by yeah, yeah, because yeah. people are in lockdown and they're bored. Yep. Right, they you keep talking to this. everyone. So we've got 82 people in the, in the chat at the moment. It's great to see you all. Don't forget to hit that like button. Um, but uh, let's have a look. Melchester Model Railway says, nice view of the sheeps. Is it sheeps with an S or is it just sheep? It's just sheep. Singular. Sheep is a weird word because it is both singular and plural. Yes. Um, it goes both ways. It's like moose. You have one moose and two moose. Two mooses. No, two, two moose. moose. No, there is no meese. It's not like goose and geese. It's just moose. And meese. And just sheep. Otherwise, so surely the singular of sheep would otherwise be The singular. Be no, the singular of sheep? Shut up and let me tell my joke. A uh, singular sheep would be a sheep. <laughs> hey, sheep, 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 sheep. sheep. Right, right, right okay. I'm going to go and get you some coke. Mm. You keep going with the comments. I'll be back. Right. Um, can I just say, right, we're, we, um, I, I'm a bit averse to make it. I'm not going to make any more moderators at the moment. I went through a phase of making a lot of people moderator. So um, uh, I have to say I, I'm not going to make any other uh, uh, moderators. Um, Scottish Train Spotter says, I've been to the National Railway Museum and it's a great museum and really enjoyed it. I thought we were getting another video, Zoe. I'll, I'll get, let her get the drinks and then uh, she can bring them up. Paul Shepherd says, ding, ding, ring-a-ding, rinky-ding, ding, 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 ding. Oh, no, that's the annoying frog. Norbert Roll, all the best to Jenny and Zoe in all models, railway, railroad, friends worldwide. Stay safe and always. AD Pullen, Jenny, do you think we'll ever see an SECR 01 class in ready to run. Yeah, I think we will eventually. There's a lot of these uh, models. We we are going to see them um, because as the pool of models um, becomes uh, ever more used up, then I think what we're going to see is that the, uh, the manufacturers are going to turn to where are all my trains gone? Um, huh. Um, I'm guessing they might come into shot at um, any moment now, but um, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that we're going to see it. Um, Z Mark Anthony, so we're staying home for two weeks. My job laid me off and I'm on unemployment. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, hopefully everything will get back to normal fairly quickly um, and yeah, this will just be a minor blip. Colin Wikes, good evening. Jenny and Zoe, good evening to you. Uh, Norman Rowe, no more Smurf. Um, Chris Whittingham, I went to the NRM in 2017 and was supposed to be going this September with luck. I think actually you might still be in luck. I'm hoping that, you know, if we're still in lockdown in September, it's really going to be um, <laughs> weird. Um, Otis JB, Mises, Goose, Geese, Moose, Mises, Sheep, Sheep. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think somebody just like, yeah, we'll just we'll make it sound like it should be something and not let it be something. Um, Brockwell Lane says, I'm sure we're all feeling a little down at the moment. And with that in mind, can you promise Zoe, Zoe won't tell any jokes? <laughs> yes, we can probably try and do something. Zoe, you're not allowed to tell any jokes. <laughs> um, I cannot under any circumstances guarantee that. Now, Robert Becking says, um, make mine a double, Zoe. Um, a double, Zoe? A double, oh, you don't want double Zoe. A single Zoe is really, really... Double Zoe all the yeah. way, what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, D827 Kelly, hi, great to see you. It says, they've all gone gone into hiding, they've all gone shy. Um, Who's oh, gone shy? Zoe, you know you put that border around where the picture of me goes? That's why you didn't want to be doing that. 
So if you just want to, yes, that's great. Yeah, that wasn't meant to be on there. That yeah. was meant to be on the one with you. Yeah, well, apparently it wasn't. So no, it means that your camera's gone off. What camera's gone off? That's the wrong thing. Front rear yard. That's the uh, one with the camera. Oh right. Okay, so that means. Oh yeah, because the lights on up there. Can they still hear us? Yes, they can. Yep. Yeah. So uh, no more potty language. I don't want the beer. You brought a beer. A, a ching tao. A, a ching tao. Ching chow. I oh, can't remember how it's supposed to be pronounced. Yeah. The front camera's gone off. Well, there you are. Turn it off and just. That's fine. Leave it be. Yeah. So Leave that's what, don't that's fiddle. fine. Don't fiddle. Norman Rowe says uh, LOL. Anfield Road Light in the Loft. Hi, the Growler. Um, Tim J.D. Dowd, uh, evening Jenny and Zoe, evening all, hope you're all well. I must admit, I'm getting, um, I'm getting, uh, like, like, hot flushes, um, fatigue, uh, is what I'm getting, uh, like, amazing levels of fatigue, but I don't get the cough or anything, so. Oh, well, I'm sure we can sort that out for you. I'll have um, one on order. Um, Z Mark Anthony says, uh, Oi they, who wanna kiss under the mistletoe in a hazmat suit? <laughs> it just it, it read like it needed to be uh, said in a in, in a strange accent. And I'm, I'm sorry, but if you're kissing in a hazmat suit, the hazmat suit is not doing its job. <laughs> well you're both in the same hazmat suit. <laughs> well everyone else is safe. Um, the only trouble with a hazmat suit is um, surely if you've eaten beans before you get into it, it slowly inflates, and even you don't want to be in the hazmat suit. Ah, you become the staple of Marshmallow Man. D827 Kelly says, I was supposed to get some modelling done this past week, but other things have got in the way. I've, yeah, it, unfortunately, it's um, weird times we're living through at the moment. I do wonder how many people are going to come out of this lockdown with uh, all these projects they meant to get on with, but never <laughs> quite did it. <laughs> Do you remember, it is time. It's what you've been saving those good things for. Something stopped. It's all... B -b 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 Sit yourself down, cupboard monkey. Okay. Just leave it be. Snuggles, is it oh. time for another one? It is, yeah. Put another one on. Okay, we're well, welcome oh. there and browser. It's just the browser, out. so we've got... Uh, now we have New Mills Model Railway. So this is another one of um, your layouts that was submitted after the stream last time. And it's not a backman either. I do like the signal actually. I um, like the back scene though. It's like a ratio signal. It's really nicely done. Yeah. Um, why is it doing that? Because it's Facebook and it decides that uh, it's a very short one. New Mills has actually sent several uh, things via his uh, Facebook page, which is what we're having a look at here. Ah, right. That's why we're quite short on this one. Yeah. Got some very nice... Uh, I like the coaches. I like the lighting. That's really atmospheric. Are they the railway children coaches? They look from lovely, aren't they? They are nice, yeah. Um, I think that's the same class 8 that, um, that I've got as well. That's very nice. Got some... Uh, Facebook likes to show you random stuff that no one in their right mind yeah, would ever go for. That nobody wants. Now, so he's got a good layout there. I like the use of uh, the depth. I like the back scene as well. That was mm -hmm. nice. This one is Melchester. It's a slideshow. So we're going to have uh, a few pictures this time. Excellent. Oh, oh that my nice. goodness, that depth. Zoe likes the, uh, the different heights, the bridge in the foreground. That is nicely done, actually. Mm. So um, we've got... Um, Ah, it's the, the Hornby Scaledale um, is it Ma Magna uh, Station building, something like that. It is a nice building. And I do like, you see you've got the, the lamps as well. I like the steps, that was good. Yeah, um, that is nice. Gives a real sense of uh, mm. depth to it, which is what I always like. A big hello to J94, actually. We showed your video right at the beginning. Yeah, if you uh, scroll back, you'll see it. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping that you were in. Oh, look at that. I like the, some of the shots he's got here where you're not seeing the sides and it mm. just looks like the the world continues. Those are very nice um, uh, retaining walls at the back as mm. well. It's like the ratio footbridge kit. And the, that is nice. Uh, it looks done. like the old mills in the background. Ah, the Hornby M7. I've just DCC fitted one of them. Even though it was allegedly DCC ready, I had to hardwire it because there's no space. 
It, it, it does sometimes feel like DCC Ready just means we've left a small hole. Ah, DCC Ready. Oh, the, ah, the, the, the Pico scale scenes, oh, the model scene, um, schoolgirls. I've got loads of them over here. Yeah, you have them running around. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm pointing. Nobody else can no, see it. No one can see it. Ah, the Q1. I do uh, like the And the, the guy Q1. that's looking at a timetable, but what really looks like I he's do doing like is pinging up against the wall. Walls. Are they scratch built retaining walls? They're very good. Oh, look at that lighting. Uh, DA27 Kelly asks Are you streaming in full HD today? We're streaming in whatever we've got at the moment. Um. Yeah, uh, basically, these are other people's videos that sent us the links after our request. At the end of yesterday's <laughs> It all looks like that guy's peeing against the wall. Yes, look, no hands, man. I, do, I like all the extra detail as well, like yeah. the tannoy box, the station sign. Those signs are nice as well. The lights really on, nice. I'm loving the way it's got the lighting just right. There's that newspaper stand that I was telling you about that uh, I'm, gonna, I'm planning to put into... Uh, oh, you've missed it now. I'm planning to put oh, into like the, the London lights. Underground. Um, the lights are really well done and they're working yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Oh, Nice bit of action. Yeah, well, I've got that same guy knocking about here somewhere. Isn't, isn't he stood over here? I think, you know, he might be over by that single... Oh, I like that shot. Oh, yes. Uh, there's Jenny's money shot, as she recalls. Nice. There he is. Looks yeah, see him. It's some... very, very well done. I like the attention to detail. The it different really colours on there. Oh, is that um, well. uh, a Vanguard... A, ja a, little, a ja javelin or something? There's a guy who's fallen over on the stairs. Oh. Must be drunk. Green line coaches, maybe? I don't know, what is that? It says Brighton, so... Ah. From yeah, Manchester there's... to Brighton on a mm. bus. Yeah, Robert Becking says, DCC ready just means it has room for a socket and a blanking plate, and doesn't it just only have space for that in the uh, Hornby M7? I actually had to remove the socket to make space to put the chip in. It My was that goodness. bad. There we go. Railway Music Lover says, I finally DCC'd my N2 um, after getting it eight weeks ago. Actually, that's pretty quick. I mean, I've had a, an M7 for years and I've only just got it fitted. And feel, uh, fly my channel one. Just saw it on your channel before this started. I watched, ah, yeah, new video, yeah. Norman Rowe likes the bus. And Susan McCormick. Hi, great idea to show layouts. We'll send ours soon. Love, Cupboard Monkey. Um, yeah, no, if people send... Everyone it... loves the Cupboard Monkey. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. actually far more personable than Jen would ever uh, would ever agree to be. We'll have um, two more, and then we'll get back to my model railway. And then we'll show some more at the end. Uh, we, we, this was one that we showed uh, We did, so, time. okay, we, we wanted that one, but... Ooh. Aha! Layouts under construction are always really interesting. Yeah. Um. I think. I think. Yeah. Actually, we showed that we showed some of this before as well. Here we go. I'm gonna to go to there, and then we're gonna jump into this again. Here we oh, go. Oh, oh, we've got the uh, Tardis effect, the Doctor Who effect. So uh, we showed some of this uh, yesterday, but it's always nice to see new layouts under construction, because um, especially here, the way you're fitting in around those roof beams. Um, it can be tricky up here in where you are. We've got two vertical beams which sort of cut through the layout. So I've been a little bit luckier than most. You um, would have had three, but you decided to kind of build one in. Where? Oh, and that, yeah, in it's behind a rock face. It's part of the mountain. Oh, I like the shed. Is that the Metcalf kit? That, that is really nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, Delta Junction, James. Hi, Jenny and Zoe. Great show yesterday. And hi, all. Well, thank you very much. Well, don't forget to like this video. Also... It's really important. Do share the video. Let other people know that we're doing this. And invite everybody you know along wow. to this. Uh, this guy's going to have this, a massive uh, session. Um, that is a big layout, actually. That looks like you've got a bigger layout than even I've got up here. Um, yeah. So uh, it, that's going to be nice. Ah, you're using the uh, Woodland Scenics risers. Um, for the gradients, I use them up here. Yeah. And they are them. amazingly good products. You've got a couple. I'm trying to remember where you've put them, but uh, uh, like the gradients. What yeah. do you think is inside that gradient? Well, the gradient I was looking at was your fiddle yard, and that's uh, oh, not no, that. That's, that's just wood that you've angled. No, that's what this is all right, inside. Right, the one them. that goes up to the mountain. Yeah, and that one down there as well. Yeah. Which no, nobody other than us two can see where I'm putting. Yeah, it's all right. They've, they've mm. seen it before. You can talk about it later on. Yeah, that I is brilliant. It. I'm liking the back. Mm. Uh, the, yeah. 
But I only came across the, what those Woodland Scenics products actually when they did GMRC. I, I, you know, you'd seen, I'd seen them in the shops, never really paid them any attention, and then got to use them during GMRC. I thought, actually, this is an amazing mm. product. So um, that was a great one. Uh, and that was uh, Howkin Junction. Howkin Junction. So we've got, um, how many more have we got queued up? That was that one. Okay, so oh, oh, yes. it's bringing up uh, Weir Yard again. I've got a select a couple more Lumsdonia and John PW22. Actually, I might as well just get uh, we might as well, well. Yeah, we might as well do all that's of all these. three that were left. Yeah, I so I thought the 57 305 Northern Princess one yesterday, I was very impressed with the bridge shots. Yeah, that, maybe we'll share that one again today because I did really enjoy okay. that. That's the the howl around that we get. Welcome to the Lumsdonia Media Channel. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Very purple. Here we go. Aha! Gunpowder van. And correct use of a spacer wagon there as well, a reach wagon. Uh, good use of platform lights as well. Lighting can I, really oh, yeah. add to a layer. And it's I one adore of the lighting. Well, we talked to uh, Richard Brighton at DCC Concepts. Look at yeah. how atmospheric is that? Um, it's some of the products that DCC Concepts do. Um, we talked to Richard Brighton mm. about a few bits and pieces, but they do a lot of lighting, and he alluded to that the, looks real. Um, to me, that looks real because mm. the lights are coming down a certain way. It looks right. Yeah, it, it's got a really nice look to it. But uh, I believe that DCC Concepts have still got their weekend offers running for free postage so if you're interested in getting layout lights and stuff then um, certainly worth uh, checking them out yeah so class that's 20 nice i think that's one, is that it? a lima or a hornby one um daypole gunpowder van and a hornby brake van i believe and you get these close in shots really you love these so don't i do I, I like the ground level mm. i like it uh, when you can use the camera to make it feel like you're actually stood on the layout mm. it, it really enhances the realism i mean look at that if the curtain and background weren't there that would i would think well, that I would like be a real shot thing. if you look at the balance and you've got the it's uh, what's the, selling it isn't it it's the rusty sides of the mm -hmm. rails have really done nicely and that kind of oily look through the platform line like you know yeah. a lot of train have dumped greasy oil and and, and muck into that it road. really does sell it yeah and ballasting is one of those areas a lot of people um, really uh, loathe doing ballasting but actually when you do it right it, it's so it makes brings a difference. the best out of a model <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. That's really Whoa. Oh. Oh, that's something that special. Oh right, is this it's either a smoke machine or somebody is uh, blowing blowing smoke at it. Yeah, but it... how good did that look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that's mm. this is nice. Yeah. And you've got a real good length there in, in the, the uh the room you've got the mm. layout in. So these uh oh no they're they're red um Red VEA Van Wides, holy ones. I've never seen them in that colour before. Uh, it's like an engineer's red. Hmm. But it actually works quite well as a nice big train. But these low angle shots really do work um, work well. I Will Tucker it. says, prize for best use of a trying Hornby station building adapted as Burton on Trent. <laughs> um, uh, a big hello to Ollie at Wardle Road. It's great to see you. Um, you love that kind of thing, don't you? The little uh, spinny uh, oh, yeah, the, platforms. Yeah, um, <laughs> Duke of what's it this <laughs> Um Guy, as himself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's really, really good. Yeah. Jay94, hi Jenny, just played back the live stream. Glad you guys like the layout. Still under a lot of work at the minute. Yes, I am male, Zoe. <laughs> I, I don't like to assume. So that was uh, Timber Surf with um, Lumsdonia. So we're going to jump across now to uh, John PW22. Ooh. And uh, Ollie at Wardle Road has not been feeling too well today, but back on the underground tomorrow. Oh gosh, 
it's there's there is a, a lot of winter folks doing the rounds as well so probably best hope it's, it's, it's just, like a pylon at the moment isn't it so, yeah i mean I, i'm i'm struggling with uh I'm, I'm starting to feel really fatigued look at the size of that mm. so i'm just glad that i'm off work for another two days so i've got a chance to try and you mean i'm recover. stuck with you for two more days you're not stuck with me you get to be with me okay i suppose i can see it in that room in that way that wow. class 56? I don't know. I don't know, 47. It's a choo-choo. It's a 47. It's a choo-choo. Zoe. <laughs> oh, and I just saw the signal move. Yeah. Yeah, so remote control of the signals. Actually, it does add a lot to the um, to, to layouts. It's a nice uh, set of levels. I've mm. been, uh... <laughs> Plenty of bits and pieces. It... I think it's still under construction there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to see if that. Oh, it's a 262 uh, 45XX Backman loco with the. Are they the Kernow Model Center Special Commission um, uh, clay hoods? Uh, they, do, they do look really nice, actually. In they fact, do, actually. I, I like the way those they're. Those hoods look a lot better than the, the, the Backman um, issue ones. Are they, are they made yourself? Because they're, they're, they're nice. Really well. they, they give it a, a little extra character, don't they? Uh, Lester TMD says, hi Jenny, what have I missed? We're just showing a few layouts from, we did the um, Virtual Model Expo, the perfect antidote to self-isolation yesterday. Had a few of the retailers and also manufacturers on interviewing, plus that exclusive, I can't believe I got an exclusive of uh, Rails announcing their all new model here on this channel. So I get the big hitters in. Um, but we also put out a call at the end for anybody uh, wanting to have their own layout featured on this Virtual Model Railway Expo. Um, and that's what we're doing now. We're working through some of, some of your models as well. And they're very, very nice. Leslie Gilpin says, right, now I can settle down and listen. Whoa! Done Jen. my domestic god duty. Watch this when, when it scrolls past. I do like a class. No, the, the computer, the computerized signal setup and everything. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's like. nice. I do like a, a class 25, though, it has to be said. And is that a Wren? Um, I believe that is a Wren um, insulfish fish van. And, and actually, the Wren ones um, started out as Hornby Double O, became Wren, then passed to Daypole. Um, I actually rate them as being still holding their own it's one of the the few items from the 1960s which i still believe are up to a very high standard but yeah i love a, a class 25 i don't actually have that one is it 25 two four something oh i must go and oh, look at i've got a I, I love class 25 thanks guys you just increased our shopping list mm. <laughs> Um, one BR blue with tops numbers really do like that. Um, so we've got a few a few extra people on um, coming on into the chat room there. So we've got 119 people in. Don't forget to like and share it as well. Look that, at actually, that. That's really this is important. This Adams Railway. Ah, oh, I like that. The the twenties uh, with the look at the very light weather. Wow, how really big is this for. thing? Ah, oh, this is—is is this the one that we saw yesterday at the end? We a little a bit, bit, yeah. Uh, actually, those VGAs do look nice as well, and the slightly weathered rail freight livery. Um, it's really look how big that thing. Whoa! Yeah, we got. I think we saw the yeah. grass as well. Look, that, I mean, that is really nicely oh. done, and um, the, the tremendous depth to the model. I'm really liking this one. And I believe I commented yesterday oh, as well, the different goodness. shades in the ballast. So um, essentially you've got the cleaner ballast on the main line and also you then got the, the slightly dirtier weathered ballast in the sidings. And it's a nice complex trackway out there. Yeah, this so, is very, very... I am imp Wow! I am impressed. James Moody asks, can anyone help with some Zemo motor settings to get a Batman 25 to run smoothly? Tried to chip mine yesterday, can't get it to run like it does on DC. Look at that cityscape. Um, and Bankman Locos can be really tricky um, to get set up right. I'm sure somebody else on here is um, uh, more knowledgeable than me. For me, there's a lot of trial and error and um, uh, doing, um, you know, checking the manual for which CV settings do what. There's about four CV settings to change. 
You probably also need to change the back EMF settings as well. I'm told that that's one of the sticking points on a Backman Loco with a non-Backman uh, decoder. But uh, that is a really nice I layout. Am so I, do, I do like that. And the back scene as well works really, really well. I was enjoying this cityscape of, of, uh, by his town once mm. you get into the uh, station. I like that city. Look at the way it just. It feels like there's an entire town there. Yeah, yeah. And Will Tucker says, excellent step set of terraced houses going up the hill. Definitely. Mm. You've Melchester got that little uh, signal. Hmm? That little. Uh, the little uh, thing over there near, near your um, Bates Motel. I, I just recognised the signal box. Yeah, yeah. it's a super quick. There yeah. you are. There's, it feels like there's an entire town there. It feels mm. like it's real. Norman that Rose is says, wow, nice, impressive. Um, yeah. Oh, DH7 Gen. Kelly can be useful. What? How good is that? That is nice. That stonework looks real. Mm, it's great. Uh, Melchester Model Railways is really enjoying seeing and hearing your comments on everybody's layout. You're absolutely welcome. And it's I love looking at other people's layouts. And the, the thing that I love there is that sign, that London 220 yeah. miles with the arrow. I so want some like that. Please, somebody tell me, are they a kit? Are they uh, a ready-to-plant item or are they scratch build? And that's a nice engine shed as well. Here we've got the... Is that the ratio coaling plant? Uh, ratio... Loco hoist, and then I think it's our Metcalf, Met, adapted Metcalf engine chip, but certainly the whole package works really well. And the weathering is good as well. Uh, and I recognise the lamps as well, the yard lamps, I really <laughs> like this. I've used them on my exhibition layout. Uh, one of the things I actually found um, with them though was the, the ladders they come with are quite chunky, so Pico, um, oh, sorry, Ratio Cell packs of signal ladders uh, that match up with the ratio signal kits and they're a much finer thing so I, I swapped out mine with those and uh, found it was a, a really good effect. Oh. Adams Railway says the terrace of houses are Metcalf kits. Um, Delta Junction James going back to this CV it's on the the loco could try a CV8 reset um, I from memory I think that the problem that you get with um, uh, a non-Backman chip in a Backman Loco is something to do with the back EMF settings and from memory it's something like CV150 or 151 something like that. What are you doing? Getting the last link that you wanted. Uh, you're not putting my actual um, thing on, on screen are you? No, you, you... that's what's on screen. Right, okay, that's fine. I didn't want to show everybody my emails. <laughs> So, um, ah, Adams Railway says they're scratch built using lettering from a station sign kit. Um, that is really nice, actually. Um, I really do uh, want to build something like that. Um, really, really nice. I love it. Richard Swiderski, yeah, apparently scratch built design. Love the stream. Thank you very much. Evan Forster, anyone else running some trains right now? Well, I certainly am, I have to say, but uh, one of the things that we're trying to do here is provide a little bit of an antidote to self-isolation to people who might have enjoyed going out to uh, exhibitions to see other people's layouts, may not necessarily have anything of their own running, and it just gives people a little bit of an alternative. So um, what we're going to do now is, let's see, so a cycle through, see, we've just had that one. I'm trying to find some of the camera angles. Actually, that's pretty good. And I can go, hello, everyone. <laughs> I am here. Um, Not all here. Yeah, but oh, where are the trains? They will <laughs> run away. If you wait, they'll come round. They will, actually. I'm becoming very good at missing the trains. <laughs> they're they're uh, all on the other side of the layout. Though there is one coming round. With, I think it's a Battle of Britain class in Southern Malachite Green on those Southern Region Mark 1s. Um, I've actually tried to go for locomotives that people often request, but um, I don't often run. So we've got the, um, I think it's a Battle of Britain. Could be an unrebuilt West Country, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we've got the Midland Compound in Midland Railway colours, Butler Henderson in Great Central Railway livery. I want to stop. Yeah, it, it keeps doing that. 
Um, Anfield Road layer and the lot says I am I am loft loft rooting my train to loft running. <laughs> Chris Whittingham, wouldn't a trainomatic decoder do it? Actually, yeah, the trainomatic decoders do tend to uh, work pretty well straight out of the box. Now, as Sven said yesterday, you can still adjust various things to get it running in different ways depending on what your needs are. But they do tend to be quite reliable. It's one of the reasons that I, I do quite like them. But I have in the past, I've tried putting um, usually something like a Hornby decoder into a Backman Loco elicits some very jerky running. Now, I th um, my memory is trying to tell me it's either CV150, 151 or 152. There's a change to be done. And it's to do with the back EMF settings. And that's what's making it go really jerky. Um, Combat, thank you, Combat Bunny, for posting the link up to Trainomatic's uh, website. And actually, uh, Trainomatic, they, um, everything's pretty much mail order in the UK. Um, don't let the prices in euros fool you. P pay by PayPal, and it's absolutely fine. Um, but um, it's usually either next day or two day delivery, uh, depending on what time you put your order in. And at the moment, they are still coming out pretty well. Um, I've just received three that I, I bought and you know they might be the sponsor but I'm still buying a lot of stuff through them um, because uh, I think that Midland compound starting to I'm gonna change that loco for something else um, but yeah um, it'd be cheeky of me to go gimme 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 free stuff so I don't obviously I just um, buy things um, but yeah um, right let's Let's get this changed for a different loco. So I'm going to lean across. And come here, you awkwardy one. Mm. Right, let's have a look. What shall I put on next? Um, what loco have I not used in ages? A gronk. Is... No, I'm not putting a gronk on that line. Gronk, 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 gronk. No. Gronkity gronk, oh, gronkity gronk. I know you want one. You know you want it. I'm going to run a J36, but in North British Railway livery. Wow, if you must. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty, isn't it? Pretty. That's pretty. Uh, just trying to show you that there. Not very well. So we've got number six, seven, three. I think that is. So. Let's get this bad girl all uh, hooked up. Six, seven, three. So, uh, just plug that in. Uh, loco six, seven, three. Enter. Bash, bash, bash. Yep, that's that's online and working. Beep. Beep. There we go. <laughs> and it is actually a sound fitted one. That's the Hornby TTS uh, J36 sound chip. It's a choo choo. Uh, it came factory fitted that one, but you can buy that sound decoder separately. Here she comes. It sounds quite chuffed. But I'm Anfield Road layout in the loft. Don't encourage her. Who's to put the Gronk on? Um, the Growler Blackwood Engage layout. Class 31 just coming to platform 3 with some telescopic hoods. Nice. Huey's train layout says, I'm still fairly new to train, so all the chatter is like foreign language to me. It's like white noise. Same here. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm only here because I like the models, not the trains. Uh, Combat Bunny says hi. I hear Zoe stamping her feet. Yeah, don't stamp around because the microphone picks it up. I wasn't stamping um, my feet. I was getting down to lie on the floor because my back's aching. Mm, actually, Will Tucker has a very interesting point. The Midland Compound is a very useful steam loco to have on a modern layout. It was restored to 1914 condition in 1959 and ran on BR network until preserved in Clapham Transport Museum before the NRM. Robert Cesare says, how about a gronk fest? Mm. Gronk fest, gronk fest, gronk fest. James Moody asks, what's the ABC implementation in the Trainomatic decoder like? Does it do smooth, constant braking like the Zemo do? 
I run on a layout with ABC protected signal signals. I haven't had a chance to test it out yet. Uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to get hold of one in the next few weeks and uh, do a full review on that. But I honestly couldn't tell you, but I would expect that it be up to a similar sort of high standard. Richard Swerdisky, uh, Maud, lovely engine, love the very short whistle. <laughs> Just to be contrary, there's the wrong one. Beep beep. Uh, Jonathan Wilson, do you think a British loco could get away camo liveries? I know, I know a German loco can. Um, I, I do actually have a Dean Goods in like desert khaki, but um, oh, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. That's Jenny's TTS sound signal. Yeah, it means that I'm not well. So, um, Railway Music Lover, I found some Dean Goods locos in my local model shop for £80 second hand. Were they the older Hornby ones or the newer Oxford uh, Rail ones? Combat Bunny, about a Gronk. <laughs> we'll have a Gronk, gronk Fest gronk, in gronk, a bit. Gronk, 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 gronk. Oh, interestingly enough, I think we might have to send a Gronk round to rescue Maud. For Maud has stopped moving. So, I think. We're going to have to give more yeah. of a push with D4192. I wonder why it wasn't moving. Mm. It's just sat over by the houses at the back, as everyone can see on the screen now. So we're going to send a gronk round to give it a shove. Gronkity gronk, gronkity gronk. Must be a greasy spot on the rails. So <laughs> there we go. It's moving now. Bronx to the rescue. So we're just banking the uh, whoa! What the hell does it think it's doing? I mean, computer. I hate Windows. So you'll see there's a little a little gronk there on the back of the train that has buffered up to help get that round. So there we are. We there did are. get our gronk. That's in. buffered it up. <laughs> yeah, but um, shh. Shall Moment. we have some more um, of the... Uh... Mark Wilson says, oh, who's not well? That would be me. Scott Malcolm says, hello from Canada. Hi to you. It's great to have you all in. And what... Shall we have some more of the uh, uh, videos while we're talking about? Um, yeah, let's have a few more of you guys. Let's bring up the so, uh, stuff. I'm just going to turn the sound off okay. on that logo. This is 57305 Northern Princess. You oh, enjoyed yes. this one. Yeah, I really love these bridges and retaining walls. Yeah. Um, I have to say, that those Whoa. tight little angles really work so so well you do let it, it really does help to bring you into the model very much th there's no evidence that it's not not a real thing mm. and it looks great yeah he's got that's a hell of a curve as well when you think about yeah, it it's not too tight it doesn't look too tight no but i'm not <laughs> about i'm not about time i'm about the length that's oh yeah, a yeah big curve now that angle i love that and you know you've got so much going on with uh, upper and lower levels. You've got the, the girder bridge on the top level. Um, and then these little constrained views between tunnels as well. Yeah. quite like these. It's very nice. Mm. I'm loving these textures he's got with the grassland there as well. Yeah, yeah. It all helps to sell the idea that it's real. Mm. I'd love to see a video overview of the layout and mm. actually see, you know, all the different parts of it. Yeah. Uh, that's quite an interesting combination there. The Virgin Coaches, Colas 37, and the Bright Yellow Network Rail, HST, was it, or a DVT? Oh, that's a good set of textures. Ah, it's the, uh, is that the Pretendolino? Yes, with the Class 57. 
Um, Railway Music Lover, Oxford model. Actually, that's not too bad a price for the Oxford model. Chris Whittingham says the sneeze knocked it off the tracks. And Combat <laughs> Bunny, you're the man. Remember, smash that like button. That is a good, a good set of curves. And... Tim oh, JD, look at that. It is good. Tim JD Dowd says I've gone all Sam's trains now, cleared out the spare room, and started laying some track a few weeks back. Got a nice big oval with a couple of loops. Just make sure you hoovered the carpet first. Yeah, otherwise you'll get bits and it'll knock everything off. Ah. Uh, uh, Deltic Junction Chain says, aha, CV58 defines how much effect the feedback from back EMF has. Normally best to leave at max 255. CV56 defines how sampling of the motor is done, ranging from 00 to 99. Right. Um, it's something that I would normally look in the manual or, or Google online because I'm not an aficionado. Ooh, the the different levels there and yeah, that section angle off, it's well. great. Uh, I'm really interested what that little sort of overgrown line, the single line and the deep, deep cutting actually is where it goes. That's your kind of shot. You love trying that to do those nice. shots. Really is nice. So I don't know whether we've got 57 305 Northern Princess in. But I know that at some point you will probably watch the um, the actual uh, video again. So um, that stonework the, looks real. The, this actually really, it really did impress me yesterday. So um, Blimey Chairman one says, just love that labouring three cylinder sound. <laughs> Norman Rose says, Gronk to the rescue. Robert Cesare says, thank you. You should actually. Uh, um, yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Mrs. Gilpin, Jenny, you should know better than run a North British livery loco on the Sabbath. The Kirk won't allow it. Well, this Kirk did. <laughs> Scott Malcolm says, just finished watching your trip to DCC concerts. That was a fun day. Uh, you're absolutely welcome. Oh, I love those old textured uh, advertising hoardings. They're lovely. Railway Music Lover. There was two liveries, the GWR and BR Black Oxford models. Actually, they are pretty good. Um, I got sent the uh, First World War khaki liveried one uh, like um, in the Rail Operations Division livery. And it's actually a pretty good, um, pretty good uh, livery. Otis JB, those tunnel cutaway views remind me of Liverpool Lime Street Light. Yeah, I know what you mean, mm. actually. And uh, I like the signals, too. Are, are they a ratio kit? They're certainly very nicely made. They look like some of the ones you've got. Mm, yeah, mine are ratio kits. Ah, that'll be a while, um, But there's some really great angles here. I'm, I'm loving this layout. This is what I really would love to uh, see in the flesh, actually. And it looks there, there's a, a, um, a gap where it comes apart. So is this one that goes to exhibitions? Ah, the behind the scenes look. Always nice to see how it's done. Mm. Bob Patterson um, says, that does look the bee's knees, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Junction, hi guys, Jenny, Zoe, Alan is in the house, aka Dragon Junction. Will Tucker, does the overgrown single line descend via tunnel to a fiddle yard? Would you have something similar on Weir Yard? You do. Already do. Um, I do have a single line that descends through a tunnel to um, the fiddle yard underneath. They are connected. Uh, we should get a oh, camera that short side at some point. Brockwell Lane says, I've seen this layout at the Wally Club Open Day. Ah. Interesting. I would love to go and see this. It, it's one that really, it's it's. It's tickling my buttons. That would be, yeah. You'd be in your element seeing stuff like this. Robert Cesar says, I use lock sound decoders. They have auto speed match. No more playing with CBs. Yeah, there are, there are some decoders. And uh, don't ask me if Trainomatic ones do that. I haven't looked into it that in depth. But yeah, certainly it does make things a lot easier. We've got 152 people in the chat room. It's great to see you all. Thank you for taking some time out of your Sunday to come and join us on this virtual model railway exhibition. And uh, the screen at the moment is 57305 Northern Princess Northern Princesses video. And it's a really great model. And like Summer said, it does remind me a lot of the approaches to Liverpool Lime Street. Mm. Really nicely done. D eight two seven Kelly, this layout no longer exists. If it is the one I'm thinking of at the Wally Club, oh, that's a shame. Because there's some, as you're seeing, there's some great um, angles on this. That's a shame. That really is. Well worth watching, though. Right, I Thanks. really would like to get to the Wally Club Open Day at some point. Maybe they'll invite me. 
some oh the textures and everything just so good there is a mm. one extra that uh, I wanted to show. Okay. He sent a message via Facebook. Uh-huh. Out, uh, it's uh, Jack's... Oh, did, you, did you pick them up from my Facebook page? Yes. It's Jack's Model Railway. He's nine years old and he's building this with his dad. Oh, excellent. So, let's have a look. Aha! The Midland Compound. I do love a good Midland Compound. And this is where I think, you know, we all start out on the floor and certainly even... More recently, I've done a lot of stuff, um, uh, testing of trains, running on the floor because we were in a rented house. He's got a nice bit, a bit of space to work mm. in as well. Uh, a 3F or a 4F, and a nice assortment of Backman wagons. I do mm. like the Backman wagons with the different um, private owner liveries. It's got three layouts and uh, three ah, rails the J72, as well. The new J72, I do want to get myself one of those. Maybe we should start a Jenny Needs a J72. Oh, one. for goodness sake. Although, yeah. saying that, the Northeastern <laughs> Railway one has now sold out, as far as I can tell. I um denied, and it just goes to show. Sometimes but, you can't. Yeah, um, sometimes uh, I'm in an and and waiting on, on stuff. You can end up losing out. I think that's the 3F. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, Flymo Chairman one. Absolutely right. It's do pink. Ping the like button, folks who haven't, and also share too. Let other people know that we're doing this. We're having this uh, uh, grand uh, virtual model railway exhibition, letting people just hang out, chat, come for the trains, stay for the chat. I like the way he set this up, actually. Mm. Um, he's got three rails with uh, two trains going in one direction and one going in the other uh -huh. to give it a bit of uh, difference. It's actually yeah, yeah. quite lively, and the space is that's quite lucky. Mm. And you would have killed for that in our last house, uh, that amount of space to run mm. away out. Bob Patterson says, Jenny, I have a couple of ratio signal kits to suit LMS, a home signal ref 470, and the round post signals ref 476. Yeah, the ratio um, kits, they're very fiddly to build, but I love the way that they can be adapted mm. into so many different types of signals. And you know, I forgive a lot with them. Yeah, they're not for... Um, uh, people who aren't um, careful builders, but certainly they can build up into some really nice kits. And if you're a better modeler than me, you can actually make them work as well. Uh, I've got uh, a message actually in the chat from John PW22, loving it again, keeping us sane, still happy for you to view this one on my channel and interested in comments. And he's, he's posted the V equals. And that's just in the comments. All right, I'll try and find it. So, um, have you put up um, a, a camera shot yet? You have. Yes, I have. Mark Wilson, how many J classes did the LNER have? Right, I did actually look into this. Um, J94, I think, is the highest number, but they were set up into two lots. So the first 50 J numbers were reserved for 060 tender locos and anything above that were 060 tank locos. So a J50 is a tank loco. Now this doesn't mean that there are 50 or well 49 J locos with an 060 arrangement. There is from J1 up to um, J, certainly there's a J39. Um, but Wikipedia does have a full list, but there's a J50 right through to J94 in terms of 060s. Yeah, Leslie Gilpin, absolutely right. Every 060 on the LNER was a J class. Z Mark Anthony says, Jenny, I sent a link to your Facebook as well today. Hopefully you get to see it. Um, we'll have to have a look for that. Oh, unless you sent that to my personal Facebook. Um, I may have missed it. I don't recognise it right. We're going to jump in. I think we may have actually seen this one, John PW22. I'm pretty sure we showed this earlier, but I'll bring it up and uh, let's go. I think we've already seen it, but Jen, mm. what do you think? Have, have we? Um, yes, this yes, one we, we did. did. We've just shown this one. That's all right. We so showed we, this a while back. Yeah. yeah, literally just earlier on today we showed this. One. Excellent. It's still damn good. Uh, uh, did you layout. get that? Um, that is that the one that somebody just posted a link in the Yes, that's, that's right. the so one. We, we, we did actually show this one earlier on. Yeah, so, um, it was very nice. Mm. Uh, we have to look back and see the comments because uh, we had a fair amount to say, didn't we? Mm. Um, 
Yeah, Mark Wilson, everybody go and press the like button. Only 37 people have hit that like button, but there's 159 oh, no. of you in the chat room. How can this be? Ronald Moritz says, loving these layouts. Yeah, we are too. This is really great. Um, uh, uh, where, where are we? I did see a comment. I was going to read it out, and then I got distracted. Jack's Model Railway. Thanks for showing my layout. You're absolutely welcome. The J72 is great, and you should definitely get one, Jenny. I, I really do want one, actually. The, the brand new um, Backman J72 is on my shopping list, but there's so many things on my shopping list. I don't have all the money for them. Um, but certainly, um, it's one I really do want to get. I have the old, uh, it's actually an old, old mainline J72 that has long since been retired from frontline service. Have you found it? I think I may have. Uh, so was this on my personal one? or? Uh, yeah. I think it'll be the top. Oh, there's quite a few here. So is that on my personal page? He sent it to you as, as a person. Right, I uh, said Mark Anthony, that, that's why you sent it to my personal Facebook page. We had to hunt for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, th I, think, um, I, th I think they're about 100 and, £110 or something. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I will get one eventually. Oh, but, are uh, these American outline? They, they are, actually. Oh, I do like these. So this is Zed Mark Antony's... Um, oh, oh, Grammarly advert. Oh, I hate Grammarly. Yeah, that's a Hudson. Oh, that is nice. I do love some of these American locos. And um, I'll be honest with you guys, I could get tempted to buy one or two. Oh, that, that, there's such a beauty to them and a bolt there. Just got such amazing presents. That is nice. You would make an, a, an American diorama, wouldn't you, just to run them? Well, you know, if I cleared everything off this layout and replaced it with American stock, you could argue that, you know, sort of um, Vermont, New England, Rhode Island, sort of Actually, like... Actually, yeah, you could. Um, Pennsylvania, maybe, um, New York State. Um, is it, Pennsylvania where all the, the vampire stationery comes from? What? Vampire stationery. Pennsylvania. Oh, um, no. <laughs> if you have to explain the joke, it's because Jenny hasn't listened. Mm. I'm liking this. It's got a, it's got a vastly different character to what we've been looking at so far. Uh, Dragon Junction has posted what I think is. Uh, it doesn't have the V equals, but they've posted a link. Uh, we're going to assume that might be for your layout as well. We might, we'll take a look at that in a moment. But I do love these American outline stuff. Um, so do. I <laughs> a bit out of place, but no, those locomotives are wonderful. I mean, look at the detail on that, and I love those wheels. They've got a lot of chunk to them, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, and they're all oh, working, working smoke as well. I'm nice. liking that. And lights. So are they, um... Oh! It's like, yay! And yeah. weathered as well. Mm. Oh, they're nice. It's uh, an A and B unit, um... Uh, F classes. What was it that uh, at DCC Concepts we were talking about uh, the way Australia uses the American outline stuff? Oh, well, modern stuff. Um, mm. They just tend to buy the locomotives from America. But don't they use it differently? Eh? One's in, uses A and B and one just uses A or something? I think they don't bother with the B units. Mm. Mm. Dragon Junction nice. says go to 6.45, please. Are the, are the, oh, no, this is... That's for his, is yeah, it? Yeah, so if we go to the comments and have a look at Dragon Junctions. Okay, I will bring up the uh, screen while I sort that out. Mm -hmm. do, well, do, do, well, that is a nice do, shot, do. actually. I, do, uh, uh, I think I did good planting that camera. The there. reason I keep going to that is that we tend to time it just as the uh, trains are going past at mm -hmm. that point when we no, come I up to the videos. I just think that's really quite a beautiful shot. Um, uh, apparently we've got 76 likes, but we've also we've got 161 people in the chat. Hi there everyone, uh, welcome to this virtual model railway exhibition and we're having a look at some of your layouts. It's really great to see the kind of work you guys have been up to. I love looking at other people's layouts as well. It's great for inspiration, it's great to see how other people tackle scenery projects and you know, getting ideas about track plans and just looking at beautiful locomotives and rolling stock running through beautiful environments. 
So um, keep them coming, guys. And um, also, uh, really glad that you could join me here on this Sunday afternoon in these interesting times that we are living through. Isn't it just? It is that. It does uh, really show mm. the old Chinese uh, curse of may you live in interesting times. Mm, mm. Um, it, it is really, really weird. Um, ah, Combat Bunny has sent a link. Roco. Um, they're made by Roco. Um, amazing. Bob Patterson, yeah, it says mostly just A units in Australia. Uh, aha! We're about to see Dragon Junction, and I think Jen is going to be impressed when I bring this up. Oh, I like that. You've got a lot going on there. Oh my goodness. I love that bridge in the foreground. Uh, bridges yeah. are a big a, a, a love of mine. I do love um, a really good bridge. It looks like in a garden shed, but you've certainly made the most of the space. Very much so. It's a lot bigger than the garden shed that I had. It's the garden shed you mm. would have loved. Yeah, and I suspect that there's a lot of a lot of model going on behind you as well. Oh, um, but wow. that is really impressive. I'm loving his command centre in the middle. I like it where you've painted the walls blue, the ceiling white. It's one of his, we did a video on that, making a lighter area yeah. to look in the model. Ah, oh, you appear to have much the same... Actually, no, you've got a different... Di it looks the same outline. Is that a gauge master, but just a different gauge master? And, aha! That's the special edition centenary version of the Flying Scotsman. And it's, um, it's, um, is it Adam Pegler uh, version when it went across America or Australia or possibly both? It did kind of a world tour. Very strange thing to do with a steam locomotive to go on a world tour. And I think it damn near bankrupted the guy doing it. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to spend a lot of money doing something you love. Mm, yeah. Talking of things I love, at some point we need to uh, get a bowl of soup with some... Did you get any bread? Yeah, uh, oh, um, that is nice. Is that the Hornby Class 101 three car unit, or is that the Backman one? Um, simple to tell. I've got the two car blue grey one. It's a quite nice model actually, but I do know that Hornby did one previously. It may even have originally been the Lima one. I like the back scene, giving it a mm. bit more depth. It, <laughs> oh, wow, look at the talents as well. I love the townscapes that people have put together. Yeah, yeah. Gives it a bit of life outside of just the railway. Mm. And does that also go around your garden? I see the tunnel mouse there in the side of the shed. Um, that's something that I did in Trinity Road. Uh, nice bit of 37 action. I do like a good TTA wagon as well. Jack's Model Railway says, Some great layouts here, Jenny. How long did it take you to get Weir Yard to this stage? Um, a under a year, um, probably about eight months from start to finish, but I work very, very quickly. And it's also not your first layout, so you, you yeah. know how to uh, <laughs> how to cut corners yeah. and do stuff. It's, it's not my first rodeo, so I kind of I knew the ropes before I launched into this. It is one of those things, isn't mm. it? So the more you do, the quicker you get, because you know, like, well, mm. if I do this, then it'll make X, Y and Z happen and it'll look great. Morris Modelling asks, how are people sending links as I'm not able to do so at the moment? Yes, uh, the best way to do it, uh, when you look at the uh, big URL at the top of the YouTube link, mm -hmm. it'll say watch question mark V equals and then a load of gibberish. If you just copy the V equals and then a load of gibberish I can, and put that into the chat, I can take that and turn it into a URL that I can use to put it up onto the, onto the show. Right, yeah, and then, then we can basically cut and paste that and uh, show everybody the video. And it's really nice. We've got a great... I quite like this format. We're going to try and keep this up, certainly through through the crisis, um, and give you guys a great virtual model railway exhibition. Yeah. Oh, we do like a 31. And that livery, I'm not a big BR Green Diesel fan, but that livery with the white stripe does really suit a class 31. Oh, look at that. The little church on the hill. Mm. It's got and, uh, so much character. Uh, Dragon Junction says that is a Hornby Class 101, so fear my ability. Um, oh, the Australian tour Austin was... Powers with his uh, Shaguars turned up. I had a Shaguar, <laughs> but I, I gave my Shaguar away. Oh. I gave it to Simon A.C. Martin after we finished filming GMRC because he really liked You're it. You're so generous. Um, uh, Leslie Gilpin says the Australian tour by Scotsman was when McAlpine opened it. Um, and uh, it did bankrupt Mr. Pegler, 
and Sir William McAlpine stepped in and got it back from San Francisco Harbour or something like that. Yeah, uh, 50p entertainment. Evening to you. I'll be back. We need to get the three rail out this week. Oh, God, you could have so much fun with Hornby 003 rail. Um, I must admit, I, I don't have any curved track here. I've got lots of straight track because I use it in my display cabinets. Uh, when I was building Weir Yard, I used so much track. I liberated the Pico Streamline that had been used to line the shelves in my display cabinets. I wanted it back for using on this layout because I ran so short of track. So I then liberated an awful lot of straight Hornby 00 track from my parents' loft which replaced it in the cabinets, but I don't have any curves, so I can't actually run them in anything other than a really long straight line. Uh, Deltic Junction James says, just starting a 6 before TMD board and only got first bit of track down and tested. 55007 pins are on it. Go to 204 work in progress and they've posted up a link as well. So that's Deltic Junction James in the comments. Um, Flyboy Chairman One has also posted a link. We've also we've got um, we've got a few links coming up in the comments. So if we accidentally miss your link, just repost it in a bit. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're not actively missing out. Yeah, links, everything's so coming just, in so quick that I'm, uh, I know I'm going to miss some, and I do apologise. Mm. Uh, Josh's train room just sub to you, Dragon Junction. Very good at layout as well, and uh, this is something else as well. It's a really good way of showcasing other people's channels. Um, I, I'm a big advocate of the community and I, you know, I'm not afraid to big up other people, other channels. I hate this kind of ivory tower thing that some YouTubers have going where they won't, they won't draw attention to other YouTubers. And it, I, you know, I'm quite happy to big up other people's layouts and stuff. It's like that good uh, time people. You know, that, this is not a zero sum game. Just because yeah. someone else gets attention doesn't mean mm. you won't. And it's why, you know, tr um, when the Jenny Monday Club's up and running properly, uh, you know, we try and get uh, a lot of different guests in, people from other channels. Yeah. Um, you wanted something to eat, so I'm going to leave you to show off and talk about uh, mm -hmm. Weir Yard for a bit and talk about the comments. And yeah. then I will be back with some soup. Um, and it will be super duper. So, yeah, we're going to take a, um, because I'm not, a, I, I'm the techno Luddite, uh, while Zoe goes and gets us some fuds. We're going to take a break and... Uh, she doesn't know how to do the YouTubes. No, I don't. Not very well. Um, I, I could probably figure it out, but... No, I don't want to. Oh, it's easier to let Zoe do it. Um, so basically, at the moment, we're going to enjoy some shots of Weir Yard. So let's see. Can we find some uh, variety of pictures? And um, yeah, as I was saying before, it's about eight months from converting the room from just an empty loft into what you see here largely took just just those eight months um and during those eight months i filmed a tv series i worked on several other tv series in the background and i held down a full-time job so um uh, one of the things i do say to people is i don't actually watch television <laughs> and, and that's how i find a lot of spare time to do this stuff um because basically um watching tv does take up a lot of time, as it were. Uh, just one of those things. Um, oh, I managed to miss... Uh, let's have a look. Um, Dragon Junction says, Ollie, add break. Um, have I missed somebody's comments? Uh, Ian the Train says, Hi, Jenny and Zoe. Great show. Thank you very much. New Mills Model Railway. I'll get a layout tour sorted soon as I'm still on the full-on building stage. It's all a bit of a mess. But actually, some of these shots where you know, we're seeing people's works in progress, I find that as inspiring as a complete model. Because sometimes learning how things are put together, seeing what people are doing, can be very good for making you think, actually, that's how I could solve a problem that I've got on my model railway. Um, and, you know, it, it's very inspiring. Um, you know, sometimes when you see a complete finished model railway, you don't see what what went into making the scenery, what went into the different levels, the hidden bits, the wiring, you know, the thoughts behind the track laying, and you know sometimes that can be as, as inspiring to somebody who's wanting to build their own model layout. Just gonna see whether that light helps at all. I put another light on up here. Um, 
Oh, it's not like in the background over there. It's a bit uh, dark. There is a bulb just up there, but um, for some reason, um, to my eyes, everything looks nicely lit, but the camera seems to be a lot more finicky when it comes to um, actually um, showing you guys what there is. Um, again, that area there, um, I see quite a bad flicker on my screen, but I gather that for some reason, when I watch it back, it, it doesn't flicker quite so much. Um, Melchester Model Railway, we, we certainly like to have a look at the J70 steam tram um, video that you've put up. We'll, when Zoe comes back, we'll take a look at that, because the J70, I believe, is that the Model Rail J70? Um, I, I really do like the look of that, and that's something that um, I wouldn't mind getting as well. So <laughs> maybe at some point we'll have a... Uh, a Jenny needs a new J70. Actually, I want to get the J72 first. Uh, we just had that shot. So, uh, yeah, the, the back of Weir Yard. I actually, and one of the other things you'll notice about Weir Yard is that there's a lot of open space with just tracking. And I, I look at some of your layouts where you've got multiple levels, lots of scenery going on. And I feel like I missed the trick. I went for a lot of sidings at the expense of space for scenery. Yeah, there is scenery uh, on Weir Yard. There's some big mountains. But like that shot there, most of that is completely flat baseboard. Now, there is a bit um, just here where you see my hand. This is an incline going up. And somebody asked before, uh, that down there, just see my finger behind the comments. That is um, the tunnel under down to the hidden fiddle yard. Uh, uh, so, fly my channel says, I wonder when you see these the growlers engage running session. I, I would as well as well as vo vomit breaking soup dragon. Yeah, we've got some soup coming. Um, let's have a look. Norman Rowe intermission. Fly my channel want an interlude. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, so, um, we've got uh, a lot of um, other videos as well we can be showing, but um, Zoe's just gone to get some fuds. So, we just enjoy some shots from Weir Yard. I feel like Tony Hart on Heartbeat. And I guess um, though only those of a certain age know that reference. Um, he was a, a big guy on TV in the 70s and 80s, encouraging kids to get into art and be creative. And uh, on these shows, which incidentally is where Morph comes from. Um, Morph was an early Ardman Productions creation for, I think it was Heartbeat. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, Leslie Gilpin said, who's bringing around the Chalk Ices? We had, we had a, um, a, an ice cream van come around the, the estate where we are earlier today, which was a bit peculiar. Um, Ellen Bevan says, can you run the same train on both the lower part of the layout, then on the upper part of the layout? Yeah, it is possible to transfer trains between the two. There are actually two different routes through for a train on the upper part of the layout to get access to the lower part. And they can do that by coming through on, see if my, where you just see my hand in shot, um, coming around here does give a link through, and then this line here is the link line. Uh, going to, uh, let's have a look, see if I can find the shot. Yeah, uh, another way through is where you see this bridge, that line comes up an incline, crosses over on the uh, this bit here, and this is an alternative route from lower to upper. The problem is that I didn't think to put another route through going the opposite way, which would have affected, excuse me, effectively given a big figure of eight, uh, which would have given a lot more operational interest. But, you know, just one of those things. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jack's Model Railway. Jenny, what is your job? I do lots of things. Um, the, bit, the job I like telling people about... Oops is um, uh, writing scripts and TV treatments. Uh, I do that freelance. I also am a published author. 
And the bit I don't like telling people about is what is actually the day job that pays most of the mortgage is I work in logistics for a company um, that deals in uh, distribution of food products, principally for Sainsbury's and Asda. Uh, Huey's Train Out says, well, let me send links. What you need to do is when you click on your own video, get your video up in a tab. In the actual URL box at the top, you'll see a big long thing. And at some point in that, you'll see V equals. You need to cut and paste the V equals and everything after it. Then it will let you post that into the comments. We can then cut and paste that into YouTube and we can then play that video. That's the best way to do it. Uh, Richard Sw Swidiski, I'm really sorry if I'm, I'm butchering your name. Um, hi Jenny and Zoe, back from doing the dishes. Can settle down with a cake and a cup of tea. Ooh. Um, let's have a look. I think I'm well behind on the comments here. Um, Flymo Chairman One, that is really good of you. Uh, you've got a great layout. We watched it grow, so don't do yourself down. Thank you very much. Uh, Oh, uh, Dragon Junction says, Jenny, you gave feedback when you touched the track then. Ah, right. That, I think I, I've managed to put a vibration through to the microphone. Sorry about that. Um, New Mills Model Railway. I'm beginning to regret having a tunnel. Real trouble with clearances where coaches get attacked by the side wall. Yeah, always verge on the side of, um, uh, you know, give yourself more generous clearance in tunnels. For a multitude of reasons, um, I, I actually did the clearances with my tunnels using the Oxford Rail Bosch Buster Railgun because it's got the biggest overhang of anything I can find. And I figured if that will get round, everything will. So um, if in doubt, give yourself a little bit more space. Right. Let's see. What other shots have we got? Um, back to the back of Weir Yard. Hark, I hear that the uh, the covered monkey has reappeared with the soup dragon. You don't you didn't know what, what noise the soup dragon makes. No, that's that's the clangers. Thank you very much. When the covered monkey gets back with her own soup, then we shall go back to the virtual model railway exhibition and show a few more of uh, your layouts. So I've got some wonderful leek and potato soup here. And this is completely homemade by the cupboard monkey because the cupboard monkey is a really good cook. So that there is homemade leek and potato soup. That is really nice. But I'm not going to leave it there because I need to shovel it into my face. <laughs> Gosh, I'm, I'm very much behind on the comments. We've got 183 people in the chat room. Don't forget to click that like button and also share this video too. Let other people know that we are live and dangerous right now in this virtual Model Railway exhibition. And we're beating the boredom on this uh, lockdown blues. Um, and uh, you know, this is the perfect antidote. Come for the trains, stay for the chat. Mm. Homemade leek and potato soup, it is good. Mm. Yeah, Norman Rowe, leek and potato. Mm, very much so. Um, and it's um, completely homemade as well, which is great. Scott Malcolm says, shepherd's pie for tea tonight for us. Um, James Moody says, don't spill it on the layer. Oh gosh, could you imagine the calamity? I mean, how would you even start cleaning that up? Tim J.D. Dowd, cream of mushroom for me. And um, the cupboard monkey likes mushroom a lot, um, but mushrooms don't like me, so I, uh, I'm, I'm allergic to mushroom. Uh, Combat Bunny, boredom busters. I like that, actually. <laughs> Can we take that title and run? I might use that next week. Uh, Leslie Gilpin says, having one of the fruit scones I made before the live stream. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, nice. oh, uh, there, oh, there's a whole kettle of warpass being opened up here. Is it scone or is it scone? I say scone because it's O and then a consonant and then an E. And when I learnt how to like pronounce words as a little wee child, it was always 
the the vowel before the um, before the consonant, if the e was after it, was always pronounced as it is said in as its name was in the alphabet. So like it's scone as in gone, not scone as in moan. It's so scone. stop sconing. Scone, <laughs> scone. Anyway, do you want to do you want to put on some more stuff whilst I stuff my face? Okay, we have a short running session here from the Growler Blackwood N gauge layout. So we're going Ooh. for a different gauge. So this is N gauge. N gauge! Hmm. Oh, nice. Doesn't that look good? Mm. I would not have said that was N gauge. The camera really hides how small or how big something is. That is nice. I like the, that. Again, the textures, that uh, grass, oh, grass effect. Yeah. The grass as well is drawing my eye as well. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that is good. 37. Train, train's going at speed. And again, the cityscape and the multiple levels. Ooh, RTC. I love the RTC livery. The world is not uh, it's not just a flat deck mm. all the way across. So I always love to see things going up and down a bit. There's definitely, I like the different levels, the bridges as well. I'm a real big fan of bridges. Yeah, this is nice. And just goes to show, even though it's uh, small, you can still do an awful lot. In fact, you can probably do more in the, in the space. Mm. Oh, good. That's a great station, actually. I do like yeah. that. So you've got um, five platform faces plus a through avoiding line. It's got and a lot going on there. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, there's a, and the um, the Metcalf retaining walls as well used incredibly well. I do like them. They're some of my favourite kits. You've used been. them on a variety of things, haven't you? Oh yeah, Weir Yard has loads, but I used them on the O gauge layout as well. Mm. That's something that we'll come to later on. People are asking if you can talk about your other layouts. Well, yeah. I've got some photographs of uh, several of them, mm. so it'd be, it might be nice to just talk about them for a bit. Yeah, it's part of the virtual uh, mm. virtual railway. Yeah, that's that a lot. nice. Oh, look at that! So complex. Yeah, it looks real, and it's got that little uh, siding at the back. Yeah, going through in the tunnel. There's a lot going on. That is brilliant. It's a good use of space, mm. and it looks real. When you look at it, the way that the tracks are crossing each other and all mm -hmm. that, it looks complicated, but it looks like you would expect to see yeah. in the real world. It's really good modelling that. Mm. You wouldn't know to look at it. It's N gauge. It's it, it's just an amazing standard of modelling. It's like I said, the camera can't tell you how big or how small a thing is. Mm. So you get a real good sense of what things are. Mm. Is that a class eighty six or an eighty seven? Some of these shots remind me of uh, Bolton Trinity Road. Mm. <laughs> I love that kind of shot, but it looks like, is he going to cut the side of the camera? Is he going to cut the side of the camera? Oh no, it's just got past. <laughs> oh, the old cliche of the bus on the bridge. We had uh, one of those situations, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Where we were trying to set up for a train running session, and uh, the train actually did hit the camera. Mm -hmm. and we got it just slightly wrong. Yeah, I remember that. I think it's on the end of one of your videos as yeah, well. Yeah, you just go, it on the outtake. Yeah, you just go, oops. <laughs> Even realistic uh, piles of dirt there. Yeah. Is that code 55 or code 80? Um, it looks like code 55. Really nice so track that's, work. Uh, jump straight back to this. Mm. Uh, not too long. Yeah, yeah there's the Gilpin. Is that all Pico mm. track? Um, it, I'm guessing it's Pico track, but it's really nice. I'm guessing in code 55. Norman Rose says, oil those wheels, Jenny. Um, it's it's a very persistent squeak that comes from one of the Mark I coaches I've got in the southern region green. I cannot tell you which one it is because I can't find it. So are we going for uh, a slideshow now? I'm thinking while I eat, because I haven't had my soup yeah. yet, you finish yours. I'm going to mm. jump over to this for a slideshow. Jenny, tell us about the War of the Worlds. So this is, uh, do I need to click them on? Or you will need to click on, yes. So a few people um, always ask about War of the Worlds. This was going to be going to Alexandra Palace. 
So unfortunately Alexandria Palace is not on, so I'm going to show you some pictures of this and I'm guessing you've got some of my other layouts here as well. I've got a lot of other layouts, yeah. Mm. So um, that's as you saw it on the actual TV show. Um, if you move forward a little bit you'll be able to release the mouse. Yeah, it's just somebody saying if you've got lots of bloopers, maybe a blooper, uh, like a full on bloopers reel. <laughs> And Zoe tends to delete most of the, the bloopers, and they're not really funny or anything. There's occasionally an odd one is good enough that we stick it on the end, but... Or it, in one case, we put it out as a Facebook uh, mm, bonus video. Yeah. The problem with the bloopers is, like everything else, once we've uh, used the footage, we tend to delete it because the majority of the footage yeah. is actually in the video, so why it, keep it yeah, twice? Yeah, it's a space issue. But there's the War of the Worlds layout, a big overview, so you're probably seeing my uh, mouse pointer going around. That's the crashed capsule, was one of the pre-builds. Um, there's one of the Martian landers there, and there's a second one up there. Both of those were animated. Again, pre-builds. The I Thunder Child those. down there, um, that was a pre-build. The Viaduct was a pre-build. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So that's five. There was a sixth pre-build, which is a bit wasted. It was the, the town scene. Yeah, you, you've never had, you've never really Felt that should have been a pre-built, have you? No. So, um, yeah, lovely Do you want to press that, clock, that X on that stupid pop-up? No one needs to know how to use previews. Yeah. So, um, these are just all behind the scenes shots. I don't know. I've oh. taken every... <laughs> Jen, we were in a rush yesterday, so I took every single photo that mm. was in the archive. Um, and that's actually War of the Worlds there, just in the background. You see pretty much the moment we arrived. So that's right at the very beginning. <laughs> Um, and that's as we're building up. This is how the scenery was built up. So you can see um, uh, basically um, jab light, which is a, a solid foam insulation. Um, There's a lot of that round mm, here, don't we? And uh, yeah, a lot of people really enjoying the Growler Blackwood um, uh, N gauge layout. I really it really shows just how good N gauge mm. is in the right hands. Yeah, and it was just superb modelling, absolutely superb. You can see here, this is what, anybody wondering what's inside some of these mountains? Now, this is actually quite an extravagant way of doing it because that's solid foam. And they're quite big. You can see there people like leaning on it, stood next to it. That's quite a depth of foam. Um, so they're quite expensive to build in that way. But if you had more time, you could make them more hollow. Um, wasn't this the point uh, where you were doing live streams with Brian? And you kept joking that Jez was uh, that Les was downstairs whittling jablons. Oh yes, in the modelling dungeon, and of course Les kept coming up and sticking his head round the door, and people guessed what we were doing. To be honest with you, but yeah, yeah. but that's the jab light he was whittling, wasn't it? Uh, that is the jab light that Les was whittling. Um, so let's see now. Uh, this was um, uh, the Scarborough Flyers, and I really, actually, I'll be honest with you, when you're actually there. It's um, one of the things that it's very difficult to gauge who's going to win and who's who isn't. You know, when when you're you're not subject to the the selective editing that people get to see on TV. We all thought that the Scarborough Flyers were going to win when they rocked up. They really had all their stuff together, and it was amazing. And we thought, wow, that is serious competition. And they had the big spiral, the Y loop on the end, and sadly they got knocked out. Um, so there's various bits here being filmed. It just gives you a behind-the-scenes look. What it was actually like to be on uh, uh, on one of these. There's shoots. my rug, my yeah. Union oh, Jack yeah. rug, which you pinched and didn't tell me about. We showboated quite a bit because we didn't know what to expect. So I, I turned up and I said, like, "I claim this spot <laughs> with a, a flag." You see the back seam test fit, and they filmed so much. This was Simon. He was great with the um, the plaster cloth. He'd never done it before, but he, he took to it like a duck to water. Oh, action shot there, and this is me <laughs> pretending to be uh, a, um, like like super film director. Simon's very good at photo bombing, so he just photo bombed it so so well. Here's a test run of the smoke machines. Is this the point where the other team started looking at you like, oh, they've won? Kind of. Well, no. It, it, like I say, it's very difficult when you're there on the day. No, there was one bit, though. You told me, uh, mm. well, oh, no, it was the music test, wasn't it? 
Oh, that was like on the final evening. And yeah. we let rip with the full demo, which we obviously couldn't play on the day because it would have messed up the editing. Um, and that, that was the point where everyone looked at you like, oh... <laughs> oh, Mark Wilson. Oh, is that Les and Simon? They didn't get on, did they? Who was the angry man with the walking stick? Angry man with the walking stick. That was Brian. Les and Simon get on really well. Um, don't let the way it was edited make you think that they didn't. Les and Simon got on really well. They still do. The editing basically was a case of we need to make it look like there's some drama and conflict. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so there's another view of, I think it's actually complete at that point, looking at it that. It does look it. Mm. Uh, sadly, it, it's, it's got a bit battered in storage, but nothing that can't be fixed in a couple of hours. So there you see in the full on... Um, it's amazing. War of the Worlds. T- and, uh, we, we were amazed. You have to admit, it's like two and a half days worth of work. And nobody was there really thought like can we pull this off well, not just that but it was a big la- a big ask not just that but a lot of you guys had never actually met and certainly never built something together i was the common denominator um i knew everybody on the team i put the team together um so i knew steph i'd never met stefan in per- person but i wrote for his magazine which is model janus fags magazinette over in sweden he's the editor so I knew him. He knew Les, but only in passing because I introduced him to Les and Les wrote an article for Model Janusz Fox Magazinette. So us three kind of knew each other through emails and stuff. And then myself, Les and Simon all met on the set of Biggest Little Railway. So we knew each other. Um, and then Brian, I knew as well. So I was the link between everybody. Hmm. And that is the uh, a shot of the Agatha Christie theme. I was player. very impressed by mm. that one. Yeah, and this was a really. Um, I think in the the, the 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 heat stage, they were the team that really went outside the box first because it, they didn't build a conventional model railway, and I was very much impressed with how far out of the box they went. So they were a deserved runner-up in that heat. And actually, we, we did ask after them. When we came back for the semi-finals, we asked after them um, to see if they'd got the wild card. And we were quite disappointed that they hadn't because we thought that that was a great build. Um, again, there's another shot of the Agatha Christie layer. And, you, you know, it was just such a great idea what they put together. Is that the one that had a, a set of... Yes, it's got a set of books as a bridge. Yeah, they used books. It's possibly difficult to see in this light. But Bottom left. Yeah. Um, but the ramp as well. They used actual Agatha Christie books to build up the ramp. So it kind of had that um, really good um, vibe of improvisation that I think we all do as kids. And that's just the rest of Forley Hill. There was a deer, so I took a picture of the deer. They were oh dear. Absolutely tame. There it is, like, way, And there's me pretending to deliver a piece to camera. Camera was turned off. There are <laughs> secrets out. Uh, and that was the bare baseboard for, and um, that's what we got for the semi finals. Every team received that. And we had so much trouble with badly laid track, badly done electrics. These were a nightmare for every single team. But Almost we, as if it was on purpose. No, it wasn't. It was just incompetence of the people who'd made them. Made for uh, good television, though. No. Uh, yeah, kind of. But um, we sneaked this at the end of the heat. We spotted this racked and stacked. So I got a sneaky photo of it so we could all look at what we were going to have to work with for the next round. <laughs> Uh, and there's War of the Worlds actually on its uh, trolley waiting to be um, put into the rack for storage. It was actually quite an efficient yeah. way of storing Oh, them. and Melanie as well. I forgot, completely forgot to name check Melanie as well. Yeah, Melanie as well, somebody I've known for about... Melanie, um, one of the most important members of your team who built the electronics. That did all the electronics. Work. Scratch built the Martians. Um, so yeah, uh, and uh, again... Um, the connection, common connection was I knew her very well. I'd known her for about 12, 13 years. And, and that's them just, that's how they were stored, racked into uh, those racking. Um, there it is in store at Hatton's. Uh, yeah. This was in Hatton's' warehouse for a good long time. What the heck? Ah. Now, now uh, I, think I grabbed could... a load of pictures, so I think we can stop now. 
But I, actually, that's a <laughs> thing there. <laughs> when The Simpsons started, I was Bart's age. Now I'm Homer's age. Isn't that just so true? Yeah. So there we are. That was War of the Worlds. And I know that quite a lot of people were quite keen to go and see that at um, Alexandra Palace. Um, Morris Modling says, um, I'd love to take part in GMRC, but the problem is finding enough local-ish people. I and, thought so. Well, uh, yeah. it doesn't have to be local. Stefan came all the way from um, Sweden. Uh, Sweden. Simon's from Sidcup in Kent. Um, myself and Les are from Bolton. Brian's from Preston, um, and then uh, we also had Melanie from Leeds, so we were quite spread out. Adams Railway says, oh dear, <laughs> Norman Rowe, Bambi. Um, there's um, is it a Sex Pistols song called Who Killed Bambi? One mate, can't prove Who anything. Who Killed Bambi? Um, Flying Red Chairman 1 says, that's a trick you could use to sell some more books, Jenny, Zoe. <laughs> you know, the ramp with the books. We could, but... Yeah, I don't think it'd be very sellable after they've been glued. <laughs> As seen on TV. Go and add 12.59, hi to you. War of the Worlds is a great concert if you get to see it. I've heard it is, actually, as well. Um, yeah, I would like to see that. Uh, Mark Wilson asks, what time of the year was it filmed? Will the virus impact on this year's production if they're doing a third series? Yeah, uh, series three is not happening this year. And that is pretty much now guaranteed. All filming for a lot of things is completely cancelled. So uh, the best that can be hoped for is it will be on hiatus until next year. I can year. give you the exact date. You filmed uh, that on the 4th, 5th and 6th. Uh, sorry, 3rd, 4th and 5th of June. Yeah, so 3rd, 4th and 5th of June uh, uh, 2019. Yeah. Mm. Now I've got a blast for the past for your next one. Bob Patterson says, well, got to go round up the ruse for milking. Can you milk a kangaroo? Um, I didn't, I didn't think, no, there was such a thing as kangaroo milk. Well... They must feed the kids something. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't think it's something that you'd you would milk them for. Um, somebody was asking for the location of the TARDIS. Uh, the TARDIS is on the layout, but it's currently gone stealth, back in its usual spot. She's hidden it in the corner, so I can't reach it. Um, she doesn't it, want me to knock over her signals again, that's what it is. It has, actually. I'm just looking at the feed. It, ha it was appearing in shot quite nicely many, many times over. Yeah, but, so, but <laughs> it's right at the back next to the industrial complex. Mm. So, is it time for us to have a look at another layout? Yes, I think it's time for some more of you guys' layout. So, um, have you taken a few links out of the uh, comments? Yes, this one was sent, uh, I, I think it may have been repeated by Flymo Chairman 1. Mm -hmm. This is Running Night at Woodthorpe Mottle Railway Club, Thomas edition. Excellent. So, so, Thomas the Tank Engine, always great for uh, appealing to the younger generation and older generation as well. We all grew up with these books. Also known stuff. as an excuse to show off James. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, looking forward to this. Oh, actually, that's, again, it's the, the bridge over the track. So nicely done. That's a bit reminiscent of how I did uh, Trinity Road out in the shed. Nice, large layout as well. Yeah, Thomas with the snowplow. My me recollection is that Thomas did not like that snowplow and banged and uh, and shook it until it bent. And there's Duck with Annie and Clarabel. And that's Henry with um, the LMS coaches. But I think Henry was, ba was, the idea behind Henry was based on a black five. Again, Duck, a, uh, I guess, 57XX pannier. Interesting coaches straight behind it, and there's there's James. I take it they, these look like the Backman models rather than the older Hornby models. I must admit, I do quite like the um, the new the Backman models. I thought that they were a better effort than uh, than Hornby. Um, the the Henry there, that's one that I Whoa. oh gosh, that went through very quickly. Uh, the Henry is one which I I do want to pick up so that when my little nephew Henry, who lives and breathes trains, comes that uh, I can send it round. I see Gordon there in the background by the look of it, and that, that looks like a Hornby Gordon. So, um, let's have a look. 
Yeah, Mark Wilson says, was it the Flying Scotsman run that brought out all those trespassers? I believe it did, unfortunately. There's a lot of, uh, as we're seeing with this supposed lockdown. Uh, oh, Melchester Model Railway as well, just for you, Zoe, uh, posted a link to their J70 steam tram video. Okay, um, uh, I'll try and grab them. If uh, I don't, if I miss them, guys, just repeat them uh, yeah. later on. Uh, Bob Patterson, see you later, take care and stay well. Uh, well, Gareth we Wade. a couple of those. Mm, Gareth Waite. Evening, ladies. How are you both doing? What have you been up to apart from entertaining us all with a great stream again? Well, we've been kind of under lockdown. I've been a bit under the weather. I, I am improving a bit now, actually. Just sitting up here and doing stuff is... Sometimes that helps. Mm. You, yeah, you've been playing an awful lot of uh, mm. the sleeping game. Yeah. Meanwhile, I've been trying to do an awful lot of stuff. And uh, mainly Halo Combat Evolved. Right. So, that was a good run. I like the... Uh, the way it was all done here, but I thought, since uh, we've got it here, how about a blast from the past? Certainly, yeah. Just J ninety four says, it's, "Is it just me, or did anyone see a gronk on the back of the passenger train?" Yes, yes, there the is. The passenger train <laughs> is being banked by a gronk due to adhesion issues. Right, this is Trinity Road. Um, and uh, I've got a few. These officers set aside. A lot of these are the location shots. But yeah. If you if you keep going to the left instead of the right, you'll go back, and eventually you'll hit overhead shots of the layout that's okay, where okay. i needed to get a lot of pictures from right well this is the mill buildings these are actually now all scrapped and um, this odd little bits got recycled cut up but this mill building survived uh, two different model railways and is now no more oh. um and actually i look at this in the quality of my model making uh, I, I i have got better since then you thought this was brilliant didn't you at I the time that, there's some good and stuff and i think that's the uh, same with everyone it's like we were saying mm. earlier on the more you do it, the better things become. Mm. And, um, oh gosh, we've got... Uh, uh, Scott Malcolm says, I'm waiting for the new round of Thomas the Tank Engine as they will be DCC ready. Oh, that's a good point. Mm. Um, Mark Wilson says, yeah, I, kn I knew a lady who used to mil milk snakes for their venom at London Zoo. Um, not the kind of um, um, milking product that you'd want to put in your cornflakes, mind. Unless you're like, um, really, really hard yeah. to match now. That's um, part of the, the station at Trinity Road. Super quick models there. Um, I, I was very proud of for doing all this at the time, but I, I've moved on a lot with my modelling since then. Um, you, did you not turn the lights on? Some I, of it didn't work out with the flash. Just keep going, it's um, alright. Yeah, the, the flash has made a mess. That's the old station building there. Um, that was the bridge for uh, Trinity Street or Trinity Road on this model. Um, this uh, water tower here does live on. Um, it's now on layout number three. It is up here in Weir Yard and um, it's uh, around one of the wooden upright posts. I sort of cut it, hacked it and uh, did it things that way. That was the exit out into the garden and uh, Newport Street Bridge. Um, that was uh, where it went out to the garden the other way at uh, Burnden Junction. Again, a lower shot of Burnden Junction. And you can see this signal here is the one that Zoe broke yesterday because it has made it as far as uh, this layout. Um, a big hello to FMR Station House. Uh, great to see you. Melchester Model Rail says, loving the kit bash buildings journey. Thank you very much. I love kit bashing. Um, I, I always joke, never knowingly built according to the instructions. And you can see my love of bridges and stuff here. Completely scratch built bridge here. Um, that's actually the other side of it. Again, scratch built girder. And that girder lives on. I recycled that and used it as the girder for the duck under down to the fiddle yard up here. That bridge I was very proud of. Orlando Street Bridge, scratch built from uh, layers of cut out plastic card to give that kind of cast iron effect. Um, I actually gave that to Brian, so it may well have turned up on his layout. Um, an overview of Trinity Road there showing um, platform five, four, one, the one remaining through line. Platform three, platform two is a bay, and then platform one round the other side. Uh, again, some of these buildings just tucked into corners. 
that signal box survives. A lot of those signals do survive. A lot of stuff was recycled, including the track, actually. I look back now and it was such a small layout by comparison with what I've got up here. And again, there's the main station building, which lives on now as the military establishment uh, that you recognise up in Weir Yard. I was very proud of that, um, that building. And you can see here, uh, demolition has already just begun. So um, I was taking point motors off at this point. So it was still largely complete, but there's a, a building that used to go over here that covered a, a, a point motor that was hidden in the platform. Um, so that's what that mess there is. Again, uh, this is a Walther's kit and uh, I gave that to Brian. So um, I do wonder if it turned up on his layout. It's a, it's a really lovely kit, but I just couldn't work it in up here in Weir Yard. And I love that blue, incidentally. That blue, I, I refer to it as works blue, but anything industrial, I like to use that colour. It's, um, I'm trying to think, have I got it hanging around? I can tell you exactly which Humbrol colour it is. I've got the tin here. Just, uh, it's Humbrol number 109. And I can well recommend it. Um, it's a great colour, actually. I've just been using it um, earlier on today uh, on a model that was um, getting a paint job. Uh, lower angle shot of that uh, Walther's kit. Combat Bunny, absolutely right. We've got 205 people in now. Don't forget to hit that like button and share too. Let other people know that we're doing this virtual model railway uh, exhibition. We're showing some of your layouts and I'm interspacing it with some shots of Weir Yard up here in the loft. And more importantly, um, I wanted to show you some of my earlier models as well. So we've done the War of the Worlds. This is Bolton Trinity Road. I'm uh, just going through in the corner. A lot of these buildings do survive. Um, they, they've uh, lived on to um, what is actually layout number three for some of these. That building didn't survive. You're probably recognising some of these buildings. That's actually a very early Metcalf kit. I don't believe it's in their range anymore. It's the brewery. And you had to cut. It, it wasn't die cut. So all the windows you had to cut out very carefully with a craft knife. It was hell to build. But you know, for its time, it was a nice kit. Uh, these are the sidings. Um, very unusual to see them empty. This was just before demolition happened. Uh, that's the lift out bridge. The lift out bridge actually does still survive. Not being used, it's just on the floor of the shed, complete with track and everything. I think the only thing that came off it was that buffer stuff I recycled. Um, that was Bolton East Junction signal box, which is now Burtley uh, Junction a signal box up here in Weir Yard. And uh, some of these, the flash hasn't really quite come out. Oh, hello. Sorry, the cupboard monkeys just crept up on me. Um, these, I do that. This row of terraced houses with the railway in, and that's made it to Weir Yard, right over in the corner. But you don't often see that because it doesn't really feature on any of the camera angles that we've got. No, oh, it's kind of tucked away. Hmm. But I was really pleased with these. These are Metcalf model, Met Metcalf models, and uh, I was really pleased with the results. And these are actually on their second, no, third model now. They were the second model that they'd been on here with these. Yeah, um, the Lost Layout had them as well, didn't it? Yeah, and though all those buildings, um, all bar the ABC Cinema, have turned up in that order, uh, just behind Bertley Junction Signal Box up here on Weir Yard. Um, other bits and bits you can see there there's a lovely shot of the station building which is now the military establishment um made from three lots of super quick market houses and if you look on my channel there is a construction video showing exactly how i adapted those kits the actual staircases down are off a hornby i think it's an r086 or something a uh, uh, footbridge uh, which I uh, just cut off and rejigged a little bit the actual staircases from them and used them to be the staircases up to the main station building. Again, something that uh, Brian had off me. So they may well yet be still in use on, on his layout. Um, canopy that I, I, I kit bashed that out of five, I think it was five 
of the day pole um, roofs. Again, it still exists. It's not on Weir Yard. It's kind of at a lost end looking for something to do. Uh, Leslie Gilpin, Jenny, did you ever visit the signal boxes at Trinity Street? West Box was a technological marvel for its age. Pre-grouping power box. Never visited them. I can't actually remember them. But um, I do know that the, I think the lever frame from that is in the National Railway Museum. Um, let's have a, uh, just have a look through some of your comments. Um, uh, Howkin Junction says, hi all, can't wait long, but wanted to show my face. Hi to you, how are you doing? Melchester Model Railway, some of the super quick models look nice and have character, but can be frustrating to build. Uh, Scott Malcolm, I have that crane kit and painted it the same colour based on yours. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, like I said before, Humbrol Matte number 109 is the colour that I use. Um, Norman Rowe, Gantry Bridge. Uh, I think that was a day pole kit. Flymo Chairman 1, ping the like button. Popular show tonight. Thank you very much. Um, Gareth Waite, FMR Station House. He has a great on-screen presence and you can hear his interest and enthusiasm for the bits you're doing. It's great. The trees were brilliant and I believe someone is using the idea. Uh, Matthew Dunmo. Hi, Jen. Just to say you uh, inspired me to do a bit of kit bashing through your videos. And now I do it all the time. Now I've just finished a Metcalf booking office kit and stuck four kits together. Oh, well, I'm really glad to um, have uh, inspired people. Thanks very much. Uh, Gareth Waite, uh, for Lansko, oh, um, I think that's, uh, yeah, uh, I began using his, the idea for landscaping, it's so, oh, okay, right, I'm with you, I'm with you, Sparky10707, man, I'm always really late for your live stream, so sorry, Jenny, no, you're not late, you dip in and out any time you want, but um, I noticed that the um, number of people in the chat is starting to drop off a little bit, so don't forget to like this video and share it too, um, let everybody know what we're up to here. We're going to have a few more of your model railways as well. Um, Timber Surf says, found my long lost coffin today, dare I ask. Uh, but a big hello at Sparky107107. Um, uh, FMR Station House says, I'm glad people can take the idea and work on it. Also, if you like them trees, I will be showing my newer type of trees, hopefully next week. Yeah, trees are a great interest to me as well. Um, I've put out a, a, a video on how to do the woodland scenics trees, which are actually quite cheap and effective when you buy the bulk make your own packs. But I've also used the Hornby Scale Scenics, and I really do like those as well. Um, Hornby Scale Scenics. Um, they're a bit expensive, but quite nice in their effect. Les has done a wire tree, uh, which he did for me, which really went down well. Very easy to incorporate. I mean, Les is selling a lot of stuff, uh, little dioramas that you can incorporate into your model railways on uh, uh, eBay. So if you're interested, uh, the, the covered monkey is pointing at the tree. It's sort of stuck behind your comments there. But that tree is one of Les's creations. So do check him out on eBay. I don't have his eBay address to hand. But if, if Les is in the comments, do, um, um, do actually uh, post and um, people go and check him out and buy some of his dioramas. Um, let's have a look. Um, Leslie Gilpin, hi Sparky. It's Jenny's weekend of live streams, very much so. Uh, it was supposed to be Alexandra Palace, but that got cancelled. So we thought the best antidote to self isolation is a little bit of community spirit, getting everybody together. And I'm just showing off some of your model railways and also some of my older model railways as well. Yeah, Mark Wilson, I was wondering the same. How could you lose a coffin? Maybe you buried it in a hole and forgot where that was. Hi, Stretch Edits. Um, hi, Robin Price. Nice to see you. Timber Surf, searched everywhere, not in any of the building boxes. Uh, uh, I think I'll come in halfway through that uh, conversation. Um, yeah, FMR Station House. Yeah, I think it's best we don't ask it's about the coffin. Railway Music Lover, I am scratch building uh, a lot of my buildings on um, one of the model railway groups that you are on, Jen, is some of my work. My name is Ian Kemp. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah, I've seen um, some of those um, some of those builds. They are amazing work. So do keep that up. Um, Alison Kelly says, "Sorry, I'm late." Oh, don't worry. You can always go back and see the rest of the stream uh, later on. It does go up as a full video when it's done. Don't forget to share this video. Let everybody else know what we're doing. It's really great to um, to see you all. Come for the trains. Stay for the chat. 
and it's something we're going to be doing pretty much every Sunday from 6 GMT although when do we go on to British summertime I'm not sure don't ask me um right ah this is the J70 from Melchester model railway so um, we're going to go over to another YouTube video now and this is another one of your models from Melchester Model Railway. We've got the J70 Wisbeach and Upwell Steam Tram, uh, Steam Tram, also known as Toby. Well, it certainly is the. Oh, are, are they the um, Daypole signals? They are really nice. Um, that is a great model. Again, um, it just shows how nice you can get an effect with ballasting. And also, I like the overgrown siding at the back. That's quite nicely done. Um, so is this derived from the Backman uh, Toby model, or is this the model rail version? Uh, let's have a look. There's some very nice shots. Mm. I love the depth, the sense of depth. Oh, those little gates with the path going. Oh, that is a wonderful look. Oh. There's some really nice scenery there. It's so nicely done. And you've got great lighting as well. It really brings the, out the best in a yeah, model. Yeah, the lighting is working so well. And it's got that sort of like typical um, English summer afternoon in the sort of like 1950s, 1960s, which I remember so well from the illustrations in the Reverend W. Audrey's books. Um, i trying to remember who, it was a famous uh, artist who did the, um, the, the pictures. Yeah. Graham MCK, just got seven myself, uh, seven oak trees from Hornby, and wow, they are amazing. Yes, a little expensive, but worth it for an area. Yeah, I call them like showcase trees. They're the ones you put towards the front of your expansive trees um, that really bring out Whoa. an area. And then, ooh, oh, that is nice. Yeah, what a hell of a town scene. Yeah, a lot of Metcalf buildings there, but ever so well put together. Oh, <laughs> the lady killers, railway themed. Robin Price asks, are you on Twitter, Jen? I am. Um, you just don't use it. I just don't tend to use it. Uh, yeah. Um, Mark Wilson, on Mondays, can you pick a different railway company to, to run just their stock, say l &E R Monday or Industrial Monday? Do you have enough locos to do this? <laughs> do you have enough locos? <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, I mean, at the moment... Um, so I've got I've got a lot of pre-grouping going around. We're obviously uh, we're enjoying Melchester Model Railway's J70 tram, and uh, I like his greenhouse there with the carriages in the garden. That is nice. That's it's a nice. lot of characters. I like in this. the signals. Um, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, you're a signal lady, aren't you? Ah, next weekend the clocks change. There's 57305 Northern Princess. Um, CSX Rensville says BST next weekend. Right, no worries. Um, but uh, yeah, 57305 Northern Princess, we, we showed your video earlier on. I don't know if you were in the chat at the time. But, um, you did like it, didn't I you? I do like that one. Yeah, Will Tucker as well says, British Summertime oh. starts next Sunday. Go now is 12.59, Norman Robo, say 28. So um, much depth. There. Look at the textures. So, it, it is looks, great. It looks real. Ah, Melchester the Model guy Railway. In their house. Uh, so <laughs> it's the, the Rapido model. That is really nice. I love that there's a, even a guy in the house looking out an open window. So much character. Oh, so good. Uh, let's have a look. Um, Chris Whittingham, was it David Shepard, the artist? No, um, it's before David Shepard's time, really, I think. Um, oh, it's going to bug me now. Um, somebody will probably post in the comments, but yeah, um, the, the artist for... The Thomas the Tank Engine books, the original ones. <laughs> Flybo Chairman 1. I tried to make a Toby out of a BR brake van and a spare electric motor. It was nearly a success. No RF uh, capacitor and the parents got to know about my experiment, presumably because of all the static on their TV. Sparky 107 107. Got to get you more American style locos and rolling stock just for some different stuff. I would love some, actually. Some of those um, steam outline ones really do look amazing. John T. Kenny. Mm -hmm. He was the original artist. Oh, right. It was the one after that. I don't, I, something like Charles Blake or something? Maybe. Does but it say who the next artist was? I will have a look. Uh, I'm sure it was somebody else in the books. Though. Yeah, Norman Rowe. Great. Oh, Zoe, uh, do you want to get back to... Yes, uh, I certainly will. Sorry, we... we um, uh, next up we have a 
Another Apparently thing there were several artists. You. Later, Le Leslie. Yeah, that name rings a bell. Uh, that's so, Fred. That, that's the cat. It's, oh, ah, right. So this... We haven't got many photos. Um, is this actually video. showing on the screen right now? Should be, yes. So um, this is the little diorama layout. It doesn't have a name that we did. Uh, I say we, Les and I did for Hornby. You may remember this from the Hornby channel uh, last year in the run-up to Christmas. And we built this as a little challenge for them. So you can see there, we used a lot of Hornby products that they sent us, and then we've winterized everything. So um, a lot of this is the scenic work of Les Cliff, and he really is great at, at this. Um, it really does look cold and wintry. It's amazing um, just what you can do with uh, with scenery. I was amazed by that in particular. Why? What, the bridge? Yeah, the bridge, when you get it, it's just red. It looks plasticky. It does. But that it, looks it's real. The, it's the cheap Hornby um, over under bridge kit. Um, it's been in their range for years and years. Yeah, I think they sent it more as a challenge. Like, here's, mm. here's our uh, yeah. cheap bridge. What can you do with it? But a winter is a layout lot. is is you don't tend to see a lot of winter layouts. They're hard to, to make. I, I They're hard to make well. Let's put it that way. And there's there's Santa giving out some gifts with the uh, the reindeer. Um, and there's a shot of us actually doing some. Work. In fact, there's the bridge yeah. being um, worked on by Les. That that's it. That's all the photos. Oh, is I, that it? I didn't take many photos because we were doing a video. I'm not going to get you like naughty pictures or something. No, of course not. Right. Uh, Just pick one and get get the weird uh, howl around off the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a few shots of um, the the little winter diorama with a cameo from our cat. Um. Yeah, J. Paul Anderson says both David Shepherd and Sir William McAlpine are now dead. Great miss for the preservation scene. I know. I know. Melchester Model Railway, thanks for showing my J70, Jenny and Zoe. You're absolutely welcome. Um, the Growler Blackwood N-Gage layout says, need to go, guys. Thanks for showcasing Blackwood N-Gage layout. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for sharing that link with us. Um, stay safe, everyone. Very much so, definitely. Um, Mark Wilson, I used to enjoy watching the Thomas TV even at 18, but just for the modelling. It's rubbish now. Yeah, the original, I think they were Gage 1 scratch-built models, and I can remember wow. the scenery being amazing. Um, Melchester Model Railway, when milk comes frozen home in pail, an icicle hang by the door. Definitely. Uh, Sparky10707 says, Alison Kelly, were you the guest star on Back on Track Saturday night? Uh, night for you and uh, they say yes they were oh there's not one I've caught is that um, another YouTube channel ah big hello to Angus's trains how are you doing um, it's been a while um, how's things doing down in uh, down in Oz I don't know maybe Australians don't like it being called Oz I don't know well they call us limey so they can uh... no that's Americans we're poms pommies fine either way and <laughs> um... Uh, Norman Rose says, thanks Jenny and Zoe, bye for now. Look, you take care, I'll catch it later. Uh, Charlie McGowan, can I post a link to my layout video? Certainly, yes. yeah, what you'll find is it won't let you post a link, but if you um, post the bit which um, from V equals in the URL, then we can we can put that on. But yeah, yeah absolutely welcome. Deltic Junction, James, bye Norman, take care. Mark Wilson, does anyone remember BBC Railwatch in the 80s? I've heard of it, never saw it, I have to say. So, um, what have we actually got on screen at the moment? Oh, yeah, I see what we've got on screen. Um, so, we're just showing a shot of Weir Yard there, uh, which is... Uh, oh, these are more from the GMRC. No, I'm setting up for the next uh, show. Have we had the URL through from the, from your guy yet? Uh, not yet. Okay. Yeah, Scott Malcolm says that I find it hard to believe the CGI would be cheaper to produce than an actual layout. Unfortunately, these day and age, CGI is not really all that expensive. It's certainly not bad CGI. Um, Alison Kelly says, yes, there's another channel live streaming on YouTube Weekly. Oh, great. It's good to know. And it's something that's really impressed me is how much the community has rallied around in this, this period of isolation. So it's great to see... Um, um, great to see so much stuff out there for people to 
still get their daily dose of vitamin train. Shall we move over to... Yeah, yeah, just got... Um, yeah, comment bunny, I'm sorry. Uh, v equals is where you want to... Ah, is that now on screen? That is on screen. Right, people might remember the Static Grast presenter. Well, there's a shot of it just being done during the final. Um, <laughs> that's me, for some reason, pushing my rack out. I was taking... Um, uh, you were posing in certain... Uh... I was posing. I was told by Simon A.C. Martin to pose like that. So there's a few shots here. I think eventually I, yeah, I stand normally. I, I don't really suit shoving my rack out. <laughs> it is a buxom rack, but there it's we go. That's action on the, shot. Yeah, that's the class three. At, uh, oh, there's a power shot for you. Yeah. And there's, actually, that's the, the Dr. Evil one. Um, Flymo Chairman one says, LOL! <laughs> um... Oh, Sparky1077 says, yes, Jenny, back on track as a new channel, Panel Star Chat, with guests every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Not a bad channel. They're still growing, working out the bugs. Very That's much nice. so. We all start somewhere. Well, um, this is the Doctor Evil layout, and I actually really liked this one. I was really sad to have to demolish it immediately after filming. I uh, put a lot of work into this, and it didn't get a lot of screen time um, for a variety of reasons, um, end, none of which was our they're... fault. I think the the problem with the uh, style of the show was really showing up at the end. You had four layouts. In there was no show. time. You, yeah, you really didn't have time. And also, um, they'd already decided we weren't going to win, so they they edited it to not. Oh, that was the grand prize there. That was. And um, there they are with the trophy at the end of filming, and that's Tim with his mini Tim model that was three D printed. Um, there's the trophy, just been awarded at that point, and it was still shell shocked. That's the that's the bit you never got to see of Doctor Evil's volcano, is the caldera rim at the top, um, with the opening crater opened by a train, never shown on TV. That's the inside of the lair with the time tunnel, which did work. Saturn V rocket. The time tunnel did not work. You could not travel in time using the well, time no, tunnel. Well, no, it spun round. We had the shark tank down there. We had a Jacob's ladder providing evil lair accoutrements and then we had uh, a railway on that top level a railway down here which is narrow gauge it was a lot going on and we didn't really get any any real credit for a lot of this um because they decided who was going to win um so uh, oh yeah that was a shark with a freaking laser beam it's a shark brake van with a laser strapped to the roof and you could just imagine dr evil going number one what's this well, sir, it's a um, it's a shark with a laser beam, just like you asked. Number one, I am very disappointed when I ask for a shark with a freaking laser beam. I don't expect a god's van with a laser on the roof, or something like that. Uh, there's a really good shot actually, that, um, showing the full layout. There was so much going on, and literally we were pulling it apart. It was still wet; glue was still wet in a lot of places. Um, well, we've already seen that. Uh, we, we've 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 been that far. So there we are. There's the Doctor Evil's magical volcano there one. So let's go back to um, let's get some shots of Weir Yard in, and then I think there's some comments come through. Um, oh, uh, we got a new junction in, have we? Uh, Quick, get him on. The good way. evening to New Junction. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like the Scarlet Pimpernel. He's very elusive. Uh, can never get him on. A uh, big evening to you, Richard. Um, Josh's train room. Hi to you. Um, Basing TMD. Wonder where all the old Thomas sets are. Probably an awful lot in people's attics. Christopher Hart. Hi, folks. Great to, to be in one of these streams. You're absolutely welcome. It's great to have you all aboard. Don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't already done so. And also share this as well. Let other people know about the Virtual Model Railway Exhibition too. Um, uh, Flymo Chairman 1 says I don't know if that was to my rack shot <laughs> um, Going down to 12.59 Back when new class 24 out Looks really nice Yeah uh, um, Really um, Yeah it's quite expensive Long wait uh, Sparky 107 107 Jenny How did you do the face on the side of the mountain? It started out as one of those polystyrene style mannequin heads Is, is what it actually started at We sawed the back off hollowed it out inside and then fitted the winking eye mechanism which was one of the things that um, 
uh, that had as an animation. Uh, and then it was built into the side of the mountain. Uh, it's kind of um, fastened with cable ties to the uh, wire mesh uh, to get it into the right place. And then we built the rest of the mountain up around it. Um, and that's exactly how we did it. <laughs> Morris Modling says, honestly, without pointing out, I do not realise you were pushing anything out of the image composition is more important. She's not that uh, <laughs> bad. Uh, Stuart Muir, hi Jenny, why not check out John Warner's excellent layout, Piccadilly layout, it's a rendition of Manchester Piccadilly Station. <laughs> um, I, sorry, I was laughing at the next comment. Um, yeah, if, if he wants to post a link to that, um, we will certainly take a look. Um, uh, go now, it's 12.59. Um, oh, right, so Timber Surf, uh, your Lumstone. Did we put, I think we may have shown that right at the beginning. We did. Yeah. Uh, I checked the URL and we have shown that one. Right. Very good layout. Uh, Flyman Chairman won. What did they want? Doctor No? Um, apparently they wanted Doctor Yes. J. Paul Anderson. Look what you, look what you did to Mr. Bigglesworth. <laughs> hi everyone. Stockton Junction uh, says, Paul Weaver. Hi Jenny in the cupboard. Monkey, hi to you. New Junction. I'm watching with the trusty sidekick North. <laughs> um, who's North? Remind me who North is. Uh, Morris Modelling. I've actually got an old 80s setup I got from Peterborough's Exhibition. Uh, Anfield Road Layout and the Loft. Hit the like button on the stream. Boom! You tell him. Uh, There's the Doctor Who TARDIS. Uh, Scott Malcolm says Jenny Kirk with Dick Van Dyke of American accents. <laughs> TARDIS. TARDIS. Uh, oh, with North Junction. North Junction? It's not in the comments. Um, uh, 57305 Northern Princess. Most of the Thomas stuff went to Thomas Land at Drayton Manor. Uh, Graham MCK. Well, just shop Jenny at Rails. Got another class 67. Um, these live streams are dangerous. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it was like £50 for the sets of Morris Modelling, but like it, Crane with a sandbox, I'm like, that's coming into my Thomas collection. Mark Wilson, on GMRC, you seem to have your arms crossed a lot, which gives the body language stance of being defensive. Do you think that is why Kathy didn't get on with you? Um, no, that's just the way I pose for pictures, because I'm normally sort of sat back looking at things. I, I find that I don't know what to do with my arms, but... Um, um, it, but Kathy, it wasn't that Kathy didn't didn't get on with me. I just I always she always felt a bit distant from us. Uh, but I don't know whether that's the same thing. Um, why? And she said something. As um, I don't know. Alison Kelly says a fellow Hoovian. Yes, the cupboard monkey is a massive Hoovian, and I'm just I'm a Hoovian up until and including uh, the serial survival in 1989 with Sylvester McCoy, which is about when I tune out of the you don't Doctor even go for Paul McGann. No, I didn't like Paul McGann. Mike O'Brien says, oh no, Zoe's got that damn green finger again. <laughs> and Railway Music Lover, my neck just crashed. It's one of the things actually, um, it, it, it's it's getting busy on the internet at the moment. Everybody's streaming box sets and stuff. There's nothing much else to do. Yeah. Philip Page says, hi Jenny and Zoe from Wingate. Aha, local. Uh, Hello to you, and uh, uh, I, I know Wingate as well. Passed through there on Thursday, actually, on my way to Falkirk. I used to represent it. Um, so Morris Modelling's got a, a video with did with John's Amazing Train showing the history of the O.O. Thomas models. Um, oh, 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 Mark Wilson, you wash your mouth out with soap, or at least you wash your typing fingers with soap, which in the present climate is, is you know, do it, do it at least 19 times a day. Um, the worst Doctor Who was Sylvester McCoy. No, he no, wasn't. No, 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 no. Sylvester McCoy was great. Excellent oh. Doctor. Excellent performances. Not the best scripts. There were some good ones, though. Remembrance oh, of yeah. the Daleks. Great, great script. Whenever the Cartmel Master Plan was shown, that was that was excellent. Mm. Uh, Morris Modeling's put up a, a link. I think that's to the... Um, we can't do history... Uh, videos. Uh, we're just doing layout videos at the moment. Railway Music Lover, welcome back. Uh, Graham MCK just shared the link on Twitter. Let's see if anyone comes along. Brilliant. And uh, McBenman1, hi from Norway. Hi to you. 
Flymo Chairman won. I thought Paul McGann was all right as the Doctor. A bit dry, but I think Paul McGann as the Doctor was great. It was a rubbish script. Again, yeah. Good mm. Doctor, bad script. Uh, Mark Wilson says, do you like the 1960s Doctor Who Dalek films? They're I... fun, but the TARDIS is weird. Um, the, the... <sighs> I don't like the films as much. Uh, so I think the first one's all right. The second one, the Dalek Invasion of Earth, I thought was pretty poor. Yeah. Uh, my filmed biggest... on the same sets as some of the St. Trinian's films, can I just point out? They were re just redressed sets that were hanging around. So, the problem with the, the films is that there are different continuities, so you've got to come at it from the point of view of this is not Doctor Who, it's a different version. And then you can enjoy them. Mm. Yeah, Mark Wilson, absolutely agree with you. The Daleks were great until they recently began to fly. Ridiculous. Yeah, they fly for the first time in remembrance of the Daleks. And it was used for horror. And it, Yeah, because it's like the, the big adage, like, oh, just run upstairs, the Dalek can't follow you. Well, they did, the Doctor did that, found the door locked, and then turned around as the Dalek um, began to hover up the stairs behind him. And again, in the first time that they turn up in the new Doctor Who, <laughs> the Dalek flying is used for horror mm. because they run upstairs and try and get away from it. And then it just follows them. And then it kills them. It's brilliantly done. And then, after that, it just turns into a flying tank monster. Oh, I see. Morris modelling. You say, you see, you can't, I can't really get behind Hartnell or Trout, personally. Not because they were bad, just that they don't hook me. Tennant is my doctor. Eh. Right. What I suggest is, the one to get into Patrick Trout and try The Two Doctors. It's a great serial which they did in the 1980s um, with uh, Peter Davidson nope. and... Colin Baker. Colin Baker, even. Sorry, and, uh, it's, more, it's got a more modern Doctor feel. It's got a bit of uh, comedy in there as well. Yeah. Um, the Two Doctors is an excellent serial. But also things like... Um, the Faceless Ones. The Faceless Ones. It's an incomplete serial, unfortunately. I think they've got three episodes, or is it two They're, episodes? Yeah, they have redone it. With our little bits. We saw a little bit... No, it was somewhat. It's one that one. I would love to see a fully recreate recreated series. Actually, no, the Enemy of the World, mm. where he's playing the Doctor and the bad guy. That's the one to go for. Yeah, Enemy of the World, which was a recently rediscovered one. Wasn't yes, it? and it's brilliant. That'll get you into Patrick Troughton. He he's very much. Uh, mm. If you if you see Matt Smith, Matt yeah. Smith is basically Patrick Troughton. Uh, Jack's Model Railway, got to have some dinner, see you later. Well, look, it's been great having your company. I know we're starting to see a few people drop out of the stream now. Yeah. So we're getting on a bit. I think what we're going to do is, because I'm not feeling the most I'm well... i let me go till half past. Yeah, we're going to go till half eight. So um, what we're going to do is... We're if gonna... anyone hasn't had one of their layouts shown yet and wants to, put the URL into the, uh, into the stream. The way to do it is go to the top of uh, the URL on YouTube or if you've got the bit where it says share, share it and it'll come up at youtube.be The camera's not working, Jen. I'm hoping it might pipe up. No, it's not. It's just not working. Uh, when you're sharing, uh, it'll give you youtube.be slash and then a series of gibberish. Grab the gibberish bit and put that into the stream. I can then convert that into something that we can use. Hmm. So I'm happy to show that. We've got a, a little bit of time left. That's it. Yeah, like Charleston's Eastgate has just done that. That's what we need. V equals and then a load of stuff. Mm. That's what we need. Ooh, right. Um, I should probably... Um, oh, I must. I am starting to find I'm okay until I move. Um, I do have a bit of the old lurgy knocking about. Um, did we watch these before? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to sort this out. Uh, we'll find out in a moment. See what we've got here. Alright, I'll just keep going, Jen. Sorry. Um, New Junction says, are you both hiding from the camera today? No, the front camera doesn't work. No. We, we've got it. No, in the heart. Don't worry. It's the Sunday special. We try, oh, ah, you can get a little shock from these tracks. When, Shocking. Yeah, because uh, DCC is a little bit, it's got a bit of a zing. You'll to need it. to lean down a bit. 
yeah. Hi. So basically, um, the Sunday stream, we're doing it more, it's more about the trains. We've been doing a virtual model out. Ah, get ah, damn. So, yes, we are here. <laughs> Okay, we've got uh, another layout now. So I'm bringing up the webcam and browser. It goes to the weird thing. And then we have running mm. session compilation from Charleston Eastgate. Uh, so. Sparky107107 says, if we're not mods, does the link show up? No, um, it... which is why I just need that end bit. Yeah. I can convert it into a URL. Yeah, as long as you post, like Charleston Eastgate's done there, uh, we can convert that into a URL. There's that new stand I was telling you about, the one that... Uh, yeah, yeah. I want is to this use on, on screen. Oh yes, yes. The one that I want to use on the underground. I like the walls there and how you... very well done. Yeah, it's nice. And is that an ice cream fact <laughs> or an advertising fact? Oh, look at that lighting, Jen. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. So, and again, it's what I say: layout lighting can really bring a layout to life. And at it the really moment, does. Uh, DCC Concepts, I believe, still got their weekend sale on. Um, for uh, all of their products, uh, I think they're offering them with free postage, and they do have a great range of working lights. If you yeah, want you to were check very them impressed out. by them. Combat Bunny camera technical issue. Yeah, for some reason, um, the main Jenny cam doesn't really want to work. Richard Swiderski, bye Jenny and Zoe. Super chat. I hope you keep well and will um, we'll be okay for the Monday Club. Yeah, we'll get everything fixed for them. Yeah, I do like that lighting. That does work incredibly well. Oh. Wardle Road, sorry I've been quiet in the stream today. Getting stuff ready for a busy day of work tomorrow. Oh, I know. Don't uh, remind Jenny of work. Um, it's one of the things that um, I'm back at work on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm lucky at the moment. I've got a bit of lurking. This is a real nice but, layout. It's got uh, a lot of good texture in there. Mm. And the light's really showing it off. It, yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah, Sparky 107, 107. All you need to post in is the um, everything after the V equals, uh, and then it should go through. Big hello to James Pets. Great to see you in the channel. Um, and also, uh, anybody who's not hit the like button, don't forget to hit that like button. And um, uh, don't forget to share it as well. Although we're, uh, we're coming up Whoa. to the end of the stream. That is nice. Yeah. So that's the Daypole footbridge, which is actually a pretty good kit, despite its age. That looks... So good. Mm. And the platform lights do work really well. You've got light yeah. in the buildings too. That uh, was impressive. So yeah, Combat Bunny, thank you for posting that up. DCC Concepts, I think they've still got their uh, weekend sale on, which basically gives you free postage. So if you're looking for layout lighting and also any of the other products that they do, now you've, a, you've a really good... enjoyed some of that stuff that uh, you picked up there, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and I'm looking forward to doing my little project for mm. the train going upside down. Oh, I'm um, looking forward to that as well. Uh, but uh, let's have a look. Uh, do, do, do. Let's have a look. Uh, <laughs> James Pets, I like the red seats. They do work really well. Oh, that is nice. There's a lot of good character to that. Mm, I like the car, actually. I'm trying to see, what is that car? I don't know. I, it looks a bit like a, a Datsun from the early 80s, late 70s, but I, I'm not entirely sure. And some really nice use of some of the extra bits and pieces there to get the TMD looking great, like the lifting jacks and the line side relay cabinets. Um, is that a class 105? Certainly the, the Batman two-car DMUs are really, really nice. I like the way that uh, he'd actually disguised oh, like the side of the uh, layout by putting some uh, rock wall down on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's got some great effects mm. to um, disguise bits of the um, the actual construction. But I like that Gerda bridge as well. That's a really nice bridge. Um, <laughs> Philip Page says, your lighting is superb. Yeah, I do like the uh, the lighting. Julian C. Hey, great show. First time here for me. Welcome aboard. It's great to see you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. And uh, so happy us. that you've... Yes, join <laughs> what, us. What? Not fuss. What? Not fuss. Ian oh, Ryan says, Mark III Cortina. Ah, ah. Nissan Skyline. Um, there's a lot of suggestions here. I'm, I'm curious what it is. Um, oh, Charleston Eastgate. It says it is a Nissan Skyline. Um, nice. Interesting. 
There's some really nice um, bits and pieces going on there. With I like the way a symmetrical layout there with Ooh. the two little side curves. I like the TK Bedford tractor unit. Um, is that a... is that an eighteen van? A what? Oh, it's the mystery machine van. Yeah, oh, it's a VW camper. It's a mystery machine van. Is that it's a Mark Three VW camper and then Ford Capri at the front there. Oh, thank you very much, Julian C. Uh, go and add twelve fifty nine. You stay safe too, and it's been great to have you along for company. You take care and see you again soon. Nice bridge there. Uh, Morris modeling. Just out of curiosity, has anyone playlisted the video shown? I would love to go back through them in my own time. Um, no, I haven't playlisted. I haven't them. either. Uh, but the only thing I can suggest is if you zip through the live stream. Um, they will all feature within the live stream and it's just a case of uh, fast forwarding through but um, certainly one of the things we're going to be trying to do this every single Sunday from six o'clock UK time I believe next week it'll we, we're on BST rather than GMT um, and it's something that I want to do throughout this lockdown just to give people a, a virtual model railway exhibition and also a chance to chat and, and socialize <laughs> because that's as important as well. Definitely, there's a lot of people who, um, you know, it's quite lonely if you're, you're on your own or getting cabin fever. And this is just a great way of keeping people's spirits up. And I think that that is very, very important. Um, Melchester Model Railway says, great couple of days streaming, give each other a huge slap on the back. Ow. Job done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, James Pet says, I approve of virtual model railway exhibitions. <laughs> uh, James Pet says, if my layout was more finished, I'd live stream. Well, actually, some people, uh, as I was saying before. We've, uh, we've done some stuff where it's not been... Uh, yeah, big... sometimes it's, it's very inspiring to actually see how people are building stuff and see things in the stages of construction. Yeah. And that's often as inspiring as, as the finished model. But that's that's great. Thank you very much for that. And really, really um, great model railway there. Josh's train room says your live streams are very good. I like watching them. Thank you very much. We do try and try and please. And tomorrow, don't forget, everybody, it's the Jenny Monday Club coming in at the usual time of 7 p.m. GMT. And we'll be back to our more normal format where you will see me on screen. So um, by the camera works. We'll make it work. Don't worry. I'll um, make it work. Robert Cicero says, Bye, Jen and Zoe. Great show. Thank you very much. Um, uh, James Pets, I think that three hours of solid dropper soldering wouldn't be very entertaining. <laughs> no, but I, I think soldering is one of those things a lot of people don't like it, but it does certainly make a big, big difference. But we're, we're going to round up the chat now. It's been great to have you company, all of you. Uh, I've had quite a lot of people in, um, and uh, it's been you know, great to hang out with you. If you missed any of the stream, don't forget that uh, there'll be a little bit of a brief pause whilst YouTube processes the video up, and then you'll be able to watch the full video as uh, an actual, um, uh, an ordinary video, and it'll all be there um, for you to watch, catch up, and view some of the great model railways that um, some of you guys have been really kind to let us share. But as a final thing, just before we head off, what about you tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, other layout that you were planning to take to a few uh, exhibitions that you won't be able to? What, Grove what about Street Grove Yard? Street Yard? Okay, so very, very that. quickly. Um, Zoe wants me to talk about my exhibition layout. Uh, you'll remember this possibly from a number of magazines. It's appeared in print in Model Rail and also Model Janusz Fugs Magazinette. And it's actually quite a small shunting layout, isn't it? It is, and a, a lot of people... I did a series on how to build a small shunting layout, and people did quite enjoy it. it you know, you're looking at... I think it's about 4 foot by um, 20 inches. So that's a good overview shot of it in quite bright light. And bear in mind, I built this layout about 15 years ago. I've come on a long way since then. Um, that's the scrapyard area that a lot of people really always... And do get drawn to um, it worked out really well I think this was at the Nottingham Ruddington uh, event uh, a couple of years ago um, so another close-up of the scrapyard the shadow is because we were getting a lot of natural sunlight which mm. was just saturating the layout 
But it do, I do like the, the, the natural light does make some great contrasts. There again at the other end of this layout. Um, and it's uh, if uh, if Richard from New Junction is in the house, it's um, I, it is available to appear in the print in magazines. Hint, hint. I do have a lot of photographs of it as well. Um, but it's it's been a fun little layout built back when I had a real um, dearth of space. So and we lived in a rented house, so anything I did build had to be able to be moved. Yeah. Um, still exists, still available for shows, although I'm such a busy individual, I don't tend to get um, the, the time to do the shows. Um, let's have a look. There we are, along the front of Grove Street Yard. That's the bit that covers the fiddle yard. Um, it's, it's more of a scene exception. The track does work, but I don't tend to use it. Um, there's a nice overview shot um, of the scrap yard and associated area. Again, another shot there. And the, the super quick market house. I've never knowingly built one as per the instructions. I think they're great for adapting into other buildings. A few more overview shots. That one's one of my favourite shots of it, actually, it has to be said. And it's, it's quite a nice little shunting puzzle, too. Morris Modeling asks, which J94 is that? Um, that's actually a Hornby model um, in NCB blue livery. McBenman, one night to you. Um, Anfield Road layout in the loss says, like the scrap. Yeah, thanks very much. J95, that, J94, that looks a nice layout. Thank you very much. It, it, it is a good fun little uh, layout, I have to say. Um, so a few more close-ups. Again, uh, the Sentinel is Hornby as well. The Class 14 in, in Load Hall livery is a Helgen model, special commission for Hattons. But like I say, it's 15 years old now, and my modelling skills have come on a lot since then, but I still quite 15 like... 15 years? Yeah. My goodness, doesn't the time fly? It does. So that's the end of that. So look, it only um, basically going to say my goodbyes now. Okay. Um, Sparky107107 107 says, Zoe, thanks for helping Jenny out. Cameras and live streaming is top shelf. Oh, wow. I'm sure thanks to you. Awesome. You have an interest in YouTube part. Awesome. You have an interest in the YouTube part of her hobby. Oh. Well, and someone's going to do it. Uh, big bye-bye to Dragon Junction. Uh, Richard Swiderski, lovely layout. Is that a Life on Mars car? Yes, it is. It is Gene Hunt's Cortina. It is. Um, bye to Alan. Uh, Chris Whittingham got to link to the scrapyard. No, got a link to the scrapyard. Um, uh, it, the scrapyard always does draw a lot of people's comments. But look, anyway... A big, big thank you to all of you guys. Thanks for dropping in. Don't forget to um, uh, 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 like the video, share it too, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Um, big bye bye to everybody. And Ian Hilpus, last comment. I plan to go to Ali Pali today and buy my first loco in 50 years and a piece of track as a launch of my layout build and have a pint afterwards. Ah, oh, well, that's life. What I would recommend is go and check out. Um, Somebody, so uh, Rails of Sheffield comes to mind. They've got a lot of great offers on at the moment, including, I believe, some um, alternatives to Ali Pali offers. And um, I do recommend, actually, the J50, the Hornby J50, they've got for about £64.50. is a great start. You get the track as well, delivered to your door. And um, um, it's a, still, a, still a good time to get into Model Railway. I know we all miss Ali Pali, but it'll be back bigger better and stronger next year anyway you guys all take great care of yourself and we'll be back tomorrow evening at seven o'clock gmt for the regular jenny monday club and uh, hope to catch you there spread the word and bye for now bye bye right, this is the awkward bit where we find the button <laughs> <laughs> bye bye <laughs>